and Sir Coin. Press start and choose your character because it is SCNS Live time, and uh, this ain't good. It's not good, guys. Uh, mainly because it is. Well, let me show you. Here's camera one. Here's camera two. Jason is damned displeased with his crew tonight. Uh, actually, Danger is running a little late. Uh, Matt, I don't know where Matt is. Rob's not going to make it. Uh, Nozny, double booked. Hannah's on her way to Dragon Con. You're dealing with me tonight, but luckily I got some backup. The uh, Lone Star Comics crew. Well, just uh, that's that's not going to last very long. Oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. What have we got here? Mr. Rick Cromack has stepped up to talk on a microphone there. Hey, how's it going, guys? Hey, buddy. Happy New Comics Wednesday. It is New Comic Day. A a rather a rather special, kind of bittersweet it's New the, Comics Wednesday. It's the last one yes, here. Yes, it is. It is. It's the the final New Comics Wednesday. The final insult no. from <laughs> from that may be true. Uh, from Lone Star Comics and Games in Plano, and uh, I suppose I should for those people that uh, there's a guy with a top hat in there. <laughs> excellent. Um, is, the mon- is, the, is the Monopoly guy? Does he have a monocle as well? You don't see people wearing the top hat that much. These you days. don't. You don't see too many people rocking the top hat. I mean, unless they're magicians, and usually there's a rabbit or 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 a scarf or some parts of a lady that was sawed in half in there. Um, I should probably explain Which though. Me of something I should do anyway. I should probably uh, explain a little bit of what this means. The final New Comics Wednesday you from Lone Star Comics and Games in there. Plano. Perfectly not a green screen camera. Anyway, <laughs> have oh. you got? The final New Comics Wednesday. I like it. All right, all right. It's very, so, very final. So, uh, so however, uh, this um, this is not uh, so much a a goodbye as it is a um, a caterpillar like metamorphosis into into a butterfly. Uh, Lone Star Comics in uh, Plano and Lone Star Comics in Hearst have been acquired uh, by Collected Comics Games and Gifts, uh, friends of ours, uh, Ron Killingsworth and uh, Brent Irwin. And uh, we and the Hearst store will become the second and third stores in the collected chain. And so we will close our doors this Friday, um, August 30th, uh, at 8 p.m. for the final time as Lone Star Comics and Games in Plano. And uh, we're going to take a couple of days to uh, change some things around and add some things and uh, possibly even uh, get our computers functioning a a little better. And uh, then we will reopen on uh, Monday, Labor Day, September 2nd, at 11 a.m. as collected comics, games, and gifts in Plano, your pop culture headquarters. So, um, the uh, as I, I really like referring to it as the regime, the regime change. Regime change, exactly. <laughs> not not like in Syria or, or Egypt or anything. Yeah, we yeah, hope, yeah, we hope change. less rioting. But okay, so you're gonna be um, what's gonna, I, I, okay? I'm just gonna go ahead. What's gonna happen to the sign, man? Okay, so the sign will probably stay up until, uh, we think, early October. Um, we do have a, a definite date that w- that has to be removed by. Uh, but, uh, Can we s- smash it? <laughs> Wait, was this like uh, office space with the, with, with the printer with the, uh, the, the A4 paper jam? I mean, I mean, it mysteriously got smashed overnight. You know, I can't, I can't take responsibility for that. My madness is not as much fun without danger to rein me in. <laughs> Damn. Who wants that though? I mean, anyway. who wants mom to rein you in? Yeah, that's true. Um, but uh, no, the sign the sign will remain Lone Star for a little while. Uh, but uh, we believe that by uh, mid to late October that'll be changed. Uh, store hours will remain the same. Um, the store staff is remaining the same. Um, oh, Shay's still going to be here. Shay is still going to be here. Um, well, I guess you got to take the good with the bad. <laughs> Into every life, a little Shay must fall. Shay is actually supposed. Shay is actually supposed to be coming in today, and possibly Sabrina as well, who has never actually appeared on camera. Uh, but uh, but we'll see if uh, if the kids make it. I think we got her on one time, like telling you something on a one of on a, one of the probably telling me I had a phone call or something, something like that. Yeah, she's a little camera shy. So nothing is changing with the store except for the name. Well, okay. some things are changing. Some things are changing. Well, then I want to hear that. Well, um, we believe that. Um, well, so last week we're, we're done. Here. Yeah, we believe that some of the, uh, the 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 foundational experiences of going to your neighborhood comic book shop um, have been uh, a little lacking uh, from what we've been able to offer the last uh, five six years. Uh, so I, I can't promise that this will be um, available on Monday, but in the very near future, we will begin once again to carry back issues in the store. Um, one of the other things that we will begin working toward immediately is uh, building up a six-month um, 
supply, backlog, if you will, of uh, comics that are currently being published uh, that will be available on the comic wall. Uh, so, for example, um, instead of you know the uh, the normal Lone Star uh, tradition of rotating product out every sixty days and returning it to the warehouse for um, sale on our website, mycomicshop.com, uh, you will be able to see the um, the most recent issue and then look behind it on the comic wall for we we endeavor uh, to. Uh, to stock the previous six months so you'll be able to let's say on a series like uh, oh I don't know Infinity from from Marvel that's out right now uh, so in a few months you should be able to come in and you should be able to pick up issues one two three four five and six on a lighter note mm-hmm I feel as though the place needs to be bigger. That Indian place next door, however, let's just can we just knock down that wall? You know what though? I ate there today, and I I, I got to give them props. Uh, no, we um, fine. We'll take the jewelry place next door. <laughs> can we can we take their their jewelry as well? Because you know that might make for some interesting equity with gold prices being what they are. Uh, um, but uh, well, we we are staying in this location. Um, we didn't want to change up too much. Um, at, at, at the same time, so. Uh, you clearly have people who come here, they know the stores here. Right, and but you know, le- the, uh, the act of changing ownership, changing the signage, changing the name, and moving would probably be a little too much uh, for our, uh, our revenue stream to bear. So uh, we have uh, signed a, a uh, three-year lease uh, extension here at this location. So we will remain here at 3100 Independence Parkway. That's the southeast corner of Parker and Independence Parkway uh, in Plano at the Tom Thumb Shopping Center. Uh, we will remain here for at least the next three years, but... We do have a definite business plan, and our business plan calls for expansion down the road. So we hope that we will earn that in the next three years. So most importantly, we can still come down here and do the show. Uh, our buddies over there at Cinelinks are still going to come in. And Absolutely. Okay. As well as uh, Derek uh, and... Um, our buddy over there yep, at Comics yep, Alternative. Yep, from Comics Alternative, yep. Um, and, you know, as I said, all our store hours are remaining the same. Um, and, uh, you know, we are going to continue to offer uh, the gaming events that uh, uh, folks have come to expect from us, uh, such as Friday Noon Magic, Friday Night Magic, uh, Magic League Saturdays at Noon, uh, Magic Booster Draft on Sundays at Noon, Yu-Gi-Oh! Tournaments every uh, Thursday, now that we're back on the uh, uh, school schedule, every Thursday and Saturday at 4.30. Uh, D&D Encounters uh, every uh, Wednesday evening at 6. As a matter of fact, they're just getting uh, geared up in the front of the store right now for that. Um, as well as Pokemon League every Tuesday afternoon at 4.30. Um, so, and we might see some other additions to the schedule. We've got some, some very interesting plans going forward. I'm curious, I, I, and this might be a stupid question to everybody else. There are no I, stupid I, I questions. How, how does it work when, you know, well, you guys are changing ownership from Lone Star to collect it. Do they come in here and just take everything out of the store and leave this place bare? I'm just, I just kind of not know. precisely, not precisely. Now there, there was a negotiated price, and that price includes a certain uh, amount of uh, uh, of inventory value, which okay. is which is wholesale, and uh, that's that's for a lot of different reasons. Um, you know, you've got you've got you know insurance aspects to that. Um, so our inventory levels have been decreasing, as you've probably noticed the last couple of months. Um, but uh, mostly what, uh, what I and my staff will be packing out of here Friday night and Saturday when we are closed. We will be closed this weekend, by the way, Saturday and Sunday, the 31st and 1st. A comic shop closed on the weekend. I know, I know. But just the one weekend, just the one weekend. Um, but uh, one of the, what we'll mostly be doing is getting the paperwork out of here. And, you know, there are certain, um, you know, uh, kind of like, a, you know, capital um, – that that Lone Star owns, you know, in terms of electronics and signage and displays and things like that, that that they'll need to to take custody of. Don't pay any mind to this. No, this no, just, no, okay, all right. That, that this isn't for anything. Okay. <laughs> How you doing, Freddie? <laughs> <laughs> Freddie's going to come over here in a minute or two, and you'll be able to. That's okay. I can hit him from here. <laughs> By the way, you left one of those. I left a dart. Did, didn't he, didn't you leave a dart last week? I bought like a pack of I, I bought like a pack of seventy five of those. Just in case. Are you just terrorizing the countryside? You know, Me and my children have epic Nerf War battles in our house, and we need I've plenty seen of some ammunition. Of those. I've so seen some of those on Facebook. I think we have friggin' um, about six of those elite Nerf guns that shoot like 75 feet. Now, your kids know not to like put one of those in their backpack and take it to school, right? Because with these zero-tolerance policies, I mean, God knows, they might end up in Gitmo. I should probably tell them not to. <laughs> that would probably be a good idea. No, I don't, I don't let them take anything. Uh, but anyway, uh, yeah, my, my, my kid actually, you know, uh, on a personal note, because nobody, you know, my kid started kindergarten. My yep. son, my oldest, he started kindergarten this week. Yep, I saw that. Congratulations. And, um, y- yes. See, here's the thing. I haven't seen all these parents like, oh, my baby's going over 
Yeah, yeah it's yeah. always the parents that cry. Me, I'm sitting there like, I don't have to Get pay. Get on out of here. I don't have to pay daycare now. <laughs> Finally, my tax dollars at work. Jeez. <laughs> All these people crying with their little tissues. And what's worse, the the, the class, they had a little parent pack. It, it had a little package of Kleenexes. Oh, my. No. And a cotton ball. And no. A, and a, and a, a single serving of tea. <laughs> Was it chamomile <laughs> to calm your nerves? I don't know, because I didn't even. I, I looked at that and said, Did they put yeah. some Midol in there, too? <laughs> oh, these parents are out there crying. I'm just like, oh, my, my baby oh, okay. going out to kindergarten. All right, I'm no. like. <laughs> now, that's pretty that's pretty ridiculous but but wait till you see how at the end of every year up, from here until the end no, just kidding. from here no, until no, the no. end of time you with a dart. that's what i was gonna take <laughs> wait till you stop terrorizing my customers no that's my buddy too <laughs> but w- wait till you see how at the end I'm of every year his wedding. you've got to are you a are you a legally ordained minister? I did one just a couple are months you, ago. Are you a pastafarian? Um, that is actually the one I put down. <laughs> How did no, I, I legally did one for a good friend of mine and his lovely wife. Uh, and I would like to th- I would like to add that I was actually very good at it. And I because I had people uh, um, teary eyed heckling you. No, no, no. They were actually teary eyed. But what's what's instead what's, of throwing rice, they're throwing rocks. Well, what's but messed, you? What's messed up is that I. Um, I didn't. I didn't quite memorize everything I was going to say, so I needed to cheat and have a book up there. And uh, unfortunately, I don't have a Bible. So it so, was go the f to sleep. No, wasn't no, it? no, no. <laughs> it was actually Mick Foley's. Uh, Foley is good, which makes it better because the friend I was marrying is actually an amateur uh, wrestler here in the area. See now, now if I ever get remarried, I want Louis C.K. to to ordain. Oh, to, to dude, I, I, I mean, I'll do it for free. All right, I'm just saying. No, I want somebody good. <laughs> Sorry, I'll have it's danger to blast. All right, so anyway, back. Yeah, danger's not blocking me today. Oh, yeah, all right, hang on one second. I'm sorry, we're... We're having a kind of a laid back show here, guys. It's our la- it's the last one here at Lone Star. We're just gonna kind of take it easy. We're gonna relax and um, I do want to get Rick's thoughts on uh, something we were talking about right before we came on air. After you go ahead, uh, uh, but anyway, I'm sorry I interrupted you. I, I forget what the heck I was. Trying. Oh yeah, no, we just wait till you see how at the end of every school year um, there has to be like this graduation ceremony and pageantry. Okay, so like when they move from the second grade to the third grade, I ain't doing it. Yeah. No, you're trust me. You're doing it because I'm not doing it. because because. Oh, but these are going to be snapshots that you're going to be able to treasure forever. That's what and I got it's, a phone the, for. it's his big day, Jason. And no, he's going to feel he's going to feel embarrassed if all of his friends cross the stage and 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 he doesn't. And they get these these awards for like most improved penmanship, you know, or like you know the he tried award. You know, like when you go to Party City and you get those like ribbons to pass out at, at, at parties that I say I like I did my best. I'll cut a deal with my son. Hey, let's go to Toys R Us instead. Up, oh, up, oh, I win. Bribery. Mm-hmm. Well, all right. So, but you had you had something interesting to say. I did. Yeah, you you, you wanted to broach a subject about something that we were talking about. Oh earlier. yes. Well, the, You're getting old timers, man. I was kind of looking into the topic this week of uh, is DC losing it because uh, they're certainly losing hey, creative hey, what's talent. What's up, Brett? They're certainly losing creative talent. Well, because last week on the show, we actually were uh, in the middle of a broadcast when the news was announced that Ben Affleck was Batman. Mm-hmm. Granted, there was a bit of a meltdown. <laughs> uh, okay, so you got, okay, so, so, so Putin's reestablishing the, the Russian Empire. You got Syria going down in flames. Iran's still trudging toward a nuclear weapon. You got most Americans who are now part time workers instead of full time workers. All right, the price of oil is skyrocketing, and this. Ladies and gentlemen, is this what is we choose to straw. burn up. This is what we choose to burn up social media. Well, over. this is a nerd show, and oh well, don't, let's not forget Miley Cyrus was twerking. <laughs> Did you know that's now in the Oxford English Dictionary? Twerk. I don't want to live on this planet. And anymore. and and the other word that was added this week was selfie, which is amazing because she selfied a video of her twerking a couple of months ago. I don't want to live on this. Miley planet. Cyrus is in charge of the English language now. Hey guys, don't even shoot. Hey Danger, what's going on, buddy? Who's this? I've forgotten who he is. Where you sit? No, you're not sitting there. Where do I, sit? I don't know. Somewhere else. <laughs> oh man, you're not gonna be my blocker. You're not gonna be my blocker today. Oh. Well, look who decided to show up. <laughs> oh. Give him a break. He had to fight traffic. And he had to work. You know, some of us work during the day. Yeah, some of us have real jobs. Mr. I work all night and party all day. How you doing, bud? It's good to see you, man. You shoot like a girl. Yeah. Anyway, now that we've uh, gotten that out of the way. So anyway, uh, so Batman. What's up, Danger? Not much. 
just another ordinary just, Wednesday here at Lone Star Comics, huh? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, uh, as I was saying, yeah, we uh, we got the announcement during the show, <laughs> and uh, that was a bit of a meltdown. <laughs> it was uh, okay. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna give you my two cents on this. All right. Yeah. All right, now, everybody keeps on saying he's going to be terrible because he was in Daredevil. Man, he was the least of that movie's problems. Uh-oh, here here comes here comes the adventurer. He's on the Serengeti. He's looking for game. Um, A- Affleck was the least problem with Daredevil. Um, but also, that guy... Now, look, he needs a good director or he needs to be self-directed. Movies like The Town... Argo, State of Play, he's definitely come up as an actor. I mean, nobody would confuse him with, with you know, Sir Lawrence Olivier, but he's definitely not an embarrassment. Admittedly, right after our broadcast, I realized that, I don't take this the wrong way, I actually don't care as much as I thought I did. I, I, I looked at it and I was like, you know what, I really don't care what DC does with their movies. Wow, somebody do, didn't like Man of Steel. I don't have a dog in this fight. No, I liked Man of Steel. However, at this point, DC is so behind this curve for getting these films out. I, You know what? Do what you want. Get your film I out. I have a question about that. Ought they to be trying to be Marvel? And, and, and hear me of out. Of course they're trying oh, to be Marvel. Marvel. No, but ought they to be? Uh, sure. uh, no. Now, that's, that's where I am. Here, now, hear me out. Okay, let's dial the clock back 18 months, all right? What really was there in the Marvel Cinematic Universe to point to and say this is a bona fide moneymaker? Iron Man. Yep. That's it. Captain America did okay money. Didn't make a lot. Thor did okay money. Didn't make a lot. Incredible Hulk. I mean, there are a lot of reasons behind that, but didn't make a lot of money. Made less, as a matter of fact, I believe, than, than Thor and Captain America. So really, this was still an experiment 18 months ago. Which and is true. And it's only because of the aggregate billion-dollar worldwide gross that Avengers managed to pull in that now we're able to say, oh, well, of course, what, what Marvel and, and Disney did was, was, was ingenious. Man, that was still an experiment until 18 months ago with only one proven product, and that was Robert Downey Jr. Now, I looked at the, um, some of the reports that came out at the end of last year talking about the box office. When you consider the cost of worldwide marketing, which was in the hundreds of millions of dollars, okay, and when you consider the fact that most of the studios make their money off domestic revenues in the first four to six weeks, after that, it goes to the, to the exhibitors. And overseas, the distributor doesn't make a lot of money. That movie needed to make a billion dollars to be profitable. Man, who wants to have a billion dollar possible loss hanging over them? Does DC really want that? Because I don't think they do. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't want to say that it was a fluke. I don't want to say that at all. But I'm just saying, if a billion dollars is your benchmark to be making money... Mm, maybe they shouldn't be trying to replicate the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Well, of course, comic movies in general have always been experimental because of there's going to have to be a lot of carryover from the comic. You're going to get the comic people are going to come watch the movie, but are others going to? I mean, Isn't nobody it? came out to see Jonah Hex or you know R.I.P.D. There were other reasons why Priest. no one wanted to go see uh, Jonah Hex. I think there was a lot of reasons. Yeah, it was that was deplorable. How Speaking long was the movie? Like 93 minutes or 93 reasons? Uh, yeah. Speaking of which, Danger, I need a thousand bucks, by the way. Why do you need a grand? Are you kickstarting something? I need this aerial UAV camera. A drone? Yes, I want a damn drone. I can mount a GoPro to it. Who Sorry, do you... I'm, 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 I'm a little cash trapped. Right I don't now. think you quite heard me. And I don't think you quite heard me. Either. I need a thousand dollars for this drone camera. I'm just going to sit back and let this happen. Sit way back. Hold on. <laughs> let, me, let me make this perfectly clear. Let me, let me go ahead and get the camera here. I want this drone, Danger. One way or another... What am, I, what am I your... What you want is irrelevant. What you've chosen is at hand. How's your liver? Good. <laughs> no, you can't have it or put me in a bathtub. Hold okay, how about a kidney? You Just one of your kidneys. Yeah, you got to spare one of those. Look, one of your kidneys can get me this drone. I'm going to show everybody what I'm looking so, at so here. You know, do you, so, so you do know the pricing on keep the going. black market when it comes to organs? No, I mean, uh, well, I've heard Jason, for those of us who listen to you every week, trust me, you don't need any more drone. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care what y'all say. I want this damn thing. Touché, sir. Touché. I mean, actually, Rob, there's zero shays here right now. Oh, yes. Actually, this was something Rob wanted as well. I just want to put that out there. Cause <laughs> of, oh, you know, little boy, listen to this. Look, look where you go there. <laughs> well, actually, it was Rob's idea. 
Well, it was Rob's idea. <laughs> well, actually, it was yeah, both of our ideas. <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna show you this thing that I, that I want. It's uh, basically a uh, four rotor helicopter that you mount a GoPro to. Oh, I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah, and uh, I'm gonna go over switch to this thing because here it is. On Join the side. Navy. I mean, you know, they're flying those off uh, carriers nowadays. Here's this thing. Oh, I've seen that thing. Great. Jason wants a Terminator. I don't want the Terminator. This is just a drone with a it's, with a GoPro. A Skynet drone. I don't it think is. it can kill me. Yet, wait till it meets you. But that, that's anything <laughs> and everything. But I just want yeah. this thing. God, what, why? What is the purpose? Okay, kickstart this for us. Come on, it's not enough to just you know hang your thing out there and say, hey, I want money uh, for this. All right, fine, I'm gonna kickstart. Yeah, <laughs> I did. Well, it be the I first did. Time. Anyway. But um, you, you gotta come on, justify. Yeah, give us. What? Give us hold, hold on. What do people get? Don't don't be like Harry Knowles and, and, and be like you know y'all can come over to my house and watch a movie in the backyard. Okay, uh, with his be, Kickstarter, okay. I will be putting up every video I can of me flying this thing around and capturing. Was that one of his Kickstarter things for season two? Of yeah, the yeah, it's terrible. Do what now? He's got like eight. Uh, Harry. Um, Harry Knowles, who made it cool, and trying to do season two for his web show, which actually was not bad, uh, considering who was starring in it, but. Um, <laughs> But uh, you know he he apparently uh, couldn't um, get re-upped by his sponsor for last season. But I thought somebody oh, yeah, funded it for him. Well, what he was doing on Nerdist. Yeah, he was doing on Nerdist. Uh, but somebody at South by Southwest, I guess, uh, stepped in and was going to front a lot of cash for a season two, and then that fell through at the last minute. And apparently Guillermo del Toro and Peter Jackson don't have enough money to give him a hundred thousand dollars because he's asking for a hundred thousand dollars to do a show in his basement, not his real. Whoa, basement. Whoa, wait, wait, wait. He needs $100,000 no, to do that? No, he's asking for $100,000 to do that. Because we, you know what, suddenly our budget just went up. I'm just yeah, saying. Our, yeah, yeah. Uh, well, now it has to include the drone. Million. Well, I, I, I'm i only asking $1,000 for the drone, okay? Only. Only, only $1,000. But you're asking for $1,000 from him. Dude, I'm tapped right I'm now. I'm telling you to give me $1,000. <laughs> you money. know what, fine, whatever. I don't want to hear your excuses. Man, go get a job and earn $1,000. Yeah, exactly. I've got a job. <laughs> And I can probably, I could probably front the money for this thing. However, you'd rather somebody else do it. Exactly. There you go. Anyway. Okay. Twentieth century economics. Twenty first century economics. Apply, apply for stimulus. Okay. What we were talking about is DC losing it. But anyway. Okay. The internet went absolutely ape. Grunt. I ape entertainment over. Really, it. you went grunt. You said grunt. Grunt. Really. I made a grunt. You. Anyway. Including us, we we positively lost it in the studio before I realized okay. I don't care. But the thing is, when Affleck has made some fine movies as of late, he's made he's made occasional. Fine he has movies. shown a lot of growth Argo. as an actor. Argo was great. Um, Argo, I Argo I believe that he can yourself. play a good Bruce Wayne. I believe he can pull off the Batman. He actually has the jawline, and I will go ahead and say this: he is a handsome man. He always to me will be Shannon. So, Hamilton. oh honey. That being said, I thought you only had eyes for me. That being said. I think I would have chosen an actor that brings less baggage to the table. Can we fault every actor for making a bad movie? Well, kind of. But, but he made Geely. I mean, well, he was in Geely. He made Jersey Girl. And that too. But I would have thought bringing an actor with less baggage to this, like you said, experiment would have been a better choice. Okay, given that they wanted to go for a early middle age guy, okay? Uh, kind of like a year one. Sort of, era. but but given that they wanted somebody who was older than Henry Can Cavill, all right, who else can you recommend? And now Shay actually, he's not here. Uh, maybe he'll pop in later. But Shay actually had a, a really good suggestion. Josh Brolin, I think, could have pulled that off. I think too. I, I was thinking because well, I think Josh Brolin, they were looking at him and well, running for it. Yeah. Cavill is thirty years old. Um, I, I don't know how old. Affleck's got to be my age. He's got to be forty-two. Uh, he's forty-one. Forty-one. Okay, close he's forty-one. Enough. Uh, I'm Roland is Affleck. actually 45. What have I done with my life? I th I honestly, and, and I want to go back to Cable here. When Cable was picked for Superman, yeah. when it was announced, he, where was the outcry? There was some. There, uh, was over, 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 okay. a British, over a British guy being... Uh, was there as much? No, but Henry Cable is not as so popular that, as Ben with Affleck. With that being said, would it have been better to go with a lesser known no. actor? No, no. Who has the look? No. Who probably would have been easier to negotiate with later on down the road? No. Jason, you you just brought up in a keyword negotiation. Let's put it this way. Let's say this world's finest, Man of Steel two world's finest. Goes Thank well. you for referring to it as that, by the way. It goes well. I, I refuse to call it finest until I see it. Hang on. 
Affleck positions himself, if this succeeds, he positions himself to direct Justice League. To direct a Justice League yeah, film. which he was rumored for anyway. That's got to be the end game. That's what it is. Um, okay, hold on. Let's break this down a little bit. All right. <laughs> not literally. <laughs> not literally. Good, good save there. All right, let's break this down just a little bit, okay? Now, y- number one, I, I would assume that just as they needed a older, more seasoned actor to play Batman, they also, for the reasons of, of making that relationship kind of like a, a mentor or um, you know at least like an, an, an old hand at the superhero gig versus the, the still kind of you know neophyte Superman, they had to have an established actor. They had to. Batman has been in this universe that they're creating longer than Superman. They can't have Henry Cavill overshadow whoever else they have. Henry Cavill just jumped into the stratosphere of A-list actors with Man of Steel. So you can't have somebody less famous than him. That's number one. Number two, the box office on opening day weekend is driven by a few factors, but one of the huge ones is the name talent above the title. They've got to be able to bring in people who don't give a darn about superhero movies because they will follow an actor that they have seen in other more legitimate dramatic or comedic endeavors. They will go into the theater and pay that money, and then they'll tell their friends, hey, it wasn't as bad as we thought for a superhero movie. Yeah. Which third, screw all you people who watch Grown Ups instead of Pacific Rim. Third, Affleck is not just an actor. He's a director. He's a producer. That brings clout now, uh, you've probably noticed that a lot of productions these days have a lot of names of production companies mm-hmm. in front of them. That's because they need more money. Affleck can secure that. And I have, I have pretty much, I have pretty much accepted Batfleck. And um, did you think they would renege just based on popular outcry? At, All publicity honest, is good honestly, publicity. At this point, I'm like, you know what? Just do it. Just get the movie made. Because you got a long way I mean, to go. They will before you can get to a Justice League movie. Still. They will. We're only like a week out from this, man. Did, did you think that they were going to be shooting this week? Let's. Uh, I mean, and, uh, and also let's just go ahead and cast Matt Damon or something. Oh, right. how about Casey Affleck? Yeah, he should be Robin. Yeah, yeah you, Casey Affleck should be. You Robin. mentioned the less known Affleck brother again. I'm gonna blast you right between the eyes. Casey's a heck of an actor, though. Actually, he was great in. Uh, go ahead, right here. But, uh, right. Uh, Gone Baby Gone. He was great in Gone Baby Gone. He was he was really good in uh, the assassination of. Um, Somebody by someone else. Uh, hey. Jesse James. Hey. Jesse James. Hey. I can't Robert Ford. <laughs> I can't Robert Ford. <laughs> so much for being a movie guy. It is. It is. But, uh, and but yeah, honestly, let's go ahead and get these movies out there because it's just taking too long. It is. If they're trying to follow the same. Um, oh wait a minute. I'm sorry. Somebody has pointed out something. Uh, they what might be. The one that he's snorting into and giggling in right now, because uh, he's. Oh, been I was just read something on on. Because you Facebook. have been off. I'm sorry. You, <laughs> you just suck as a human being. <laughs> <laughs> You're a horrible, mean person, Mr. Grinch. You're a mean one, Mr. Uh, X. My bad. Kind of. I don't know. I think you that was kind of. You know how to run <laughs> a I board. Think that was a Freudian, honestly. <laughs> just you know. You know what? You're you, a broken down jalopy, not my trustworthy old Ford, Mr. X. I would like to just go ahead and add <laughs> that if your ass had been here on time, He's and I would have you known now. that your mic was off, I wouldn't have had that problem. But he has nothing to say because his mic is off. Because anyway, I'm going to turn it back off. <laughs> I will come over and smack you. And I will shoot you with my Nerf gun. No, I'm just going to stay in here and watch this. And hopefully put can out your eye. These, can I buy one of these cups from you just to smack him in the head with? So anyway, sure. Okay, well, okay cool. we are on the they way do to break. <laughs> Man of Steel 2, which let's go ahead and call it World's Finest. World's Finest. I'm, I'm, through, I'm, I'm through with the outrage on it. Let's just go ahead and get this done. I, I, I am. I'm just, let, let's get this movie made and let's see how it does. Does anybody have anything to say about Brian Cranston as Lex Luthor? The Has fact he been that been officially uh, rumored, cast? I, apparently it's. Dude, when they're talking six to ten picture deals, that's more than rumored. That's more than rumored. Well, but what does everybody think about that? About, you know, now Man of Steel was no theoretically, theoretically very innovative in that. For the first time, you know, in a long time, we have a, a Superman movie without Lex Luthor in it. Um, but here, that seems that they're going back to the well. So, how does everybody feel about that creatively? I do think he's a little bit older than I would have chosen, but um, we could always go with the whole. Eventually, he dies and gets cloned. By the way, has anybody figured out yet that Cranston was also cast in Argo? That's right. 
he gee, had, I wonder why they put he had, Ben he Affleck. Had hair in that movie. I wonder why they put Ben oh. Affleck in this movie. Maybe he brings other talent too. That's point number four that Chrome yep. makes. So, um, look, I and and I'm not I'm not in any way a defender of not Affleck. a lot of outrage over uh, that one either. No, I'm, I, and I'm and I'm in no way a, def- a defender of Affleck. You're right. He's he's done some crap stuff. Oh, yeah. That being said, um, how much responsibility does the actor have? For you know the dialogue, for the direction, for the editing, for the overall you know vision of the film. As long as he has look, I don't. I really don't want much out of Affleck for this Batman role. I don't want. I agree. He should underplay. I don't want this voice. <laughs> I, I don't yet. think he's capable of that voice. But I do want him to have a distinct, distinctly different voice from Batman and Bruce Wayne. I mean, I think that they're going to be. Uh, yeah. Well, I. Uh, well, we'll see. We'll see. He better not pull a Clooney on me. You know, actually, I, I was telling Jason this. You, you do know Batman and Robin was they shot some of it here locally, right? What? Yeah, at the, the old studios at Los Colinas. Oh, that's right. That's right. They did. They shot the. Uh, oh, they did. It in I've the just studio. blocked that movie out. Yeah, they so. shot. Uh, I think Mr. Freeze's stuff out there. Arnold. <laughs> Got to bring Freddie in here in a minute or two to do his Arnold uh, impression. No, 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 no. We're not doing that. You're Mr. Freeze. Oh, uh, we got it. We got to bring him on camera for that. <laughs> okay, that's it. I'm rena- I, 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 I'm I'm relinquishing my seat. I'll see you guys on the flip. I'll see you guys an hour or two. All right. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen. That was the greatness that is Rick Cromack, proprietor of soon of, of, of soon to be the end of Lone Star Comics and yeah, this is this is the end, my friend. This is the end. Are they going to are they going to burn the store down after we leave tonight? Um, well, I was. Just torch it. <laughs> I'm kidding. I know they're not going to do that. You can't do crap like that, buddy. Anyway. I would never do that. So how's your day been going? Eh, it's good. Why are y'all nervous? Had an email outage. Oh, wow. That was fun. Mm. That was good times. Um, Where the hell is the rest of this crew? You know, all these dorks. Let's see. There's well, a Des made what we're going to go. It's a mistake. However, I'm not going to let it slide as a mistake. I'm going to go ahead and, uh, yeah, we're always you know, on, buddy. Uh, Matt's not here. Uh, Cora is on her way out yeah, to where, Dragon Con. Yeah, where is where is Greek Fire? Did he uh, he ran away? Didn't he? Was he already heading to Chicago? I don't. Well, I think he said he was. Yeah, he was going to go there for vacation or something. Sup, Jesus Freddy? Is, Lord, come on, style, Lord. You know, or as our friend South the Boar call him, Jesus. He does turn water into wine. <laughs> Everyone's seen that picture. But I cheap. Think, but at this point. question is, question is, is it good wine or is it the cheap stuff like uh, in the box? The cheap, the I cheap mean, stuff's okay because the effect is the same. We brew it in the barrio. <laughs> oh, wow. As long as it's not like toilet wine. I was gonna say, I was gonna say gel toilet wine. <laughs> it's a, it's brewed by some guy named Vato. It's wow. Cool, okay. <laughs> it's cool though because everybody's gonna be here uh, this weekend. Oh, I'm excited for this weekend. You are. Damn it, I am excited for this weekend. I'm sort of excited. It's a cool uh, weekend. It's going to be anime. We got Anime Fest, and we got the reopening of Lone Star as collected. Collected but comics. Which I won't be here. Toys, video games. Why? I'm on vacation. You're going... Oh, okay, I'm good. So th- they, they, are, they are letting you back in the door after they change it over. I mean, I would hope so. I kind of feel like they're going to have a sign, like, no Freddy's allowed. And just have a picture of you with, like, a big circle to slash through it? Yeah, it'd, be, it'd be like the Ghostbusters pose. Though, I'd be <laughs> <laughs> will you be doing, will you doing the original, or will you be doing this one? Uh, <laughs> you know, historically, yeah, maybe, maybe like a Dio pose. Yeah. Speaking of this day, though, historically, it is a very awesome day, though. Yeah, it is. You know why? What? Because this is the 50th anniversary of MLK's oh. "I Have a Dream" speech. Uh, well, yeah, there's and that the March too. on Washington. Well, That's well, there's that too. But the other, the other thing. Uh, Holy Diver was released on LP. No, no. <gasps> Holy Diver. What? Famous birthday. Your birthday. No, damn it. I'm not playing. Oh, free. Jack Kirby. That's right. Jack Kirby would no. have been. What do you mean no? That is his birthday. Well, yeah, it is his birthday. Okay, That's yeah. the most important birthday there is no. in a comic shop. Yeah. What? No, there, there is another pop culture icon that it's their birthday today. Yeah, but we're Bruce in a Campbell? comic shop. Yes. No, it's I not wish. Bruce Campbell. Hey, I wish I had that chin. It is the 20th anniversary of the Power Rangers. Power Rangers. That didn't have the effect I wanted because I wasn't on camera, but yes. It's morphin' time. Yes, but it is the 20th anniversary of the uh, Power Rangers franchise. Today was the day that the uh, first the, Ameri- episode, the the release of the American the franchise. day of the dumpster episode uh, came to be. So yeah, y'all at what Power Rangers number one show right now? 
Yes. Very good. Very good. <laughs> That's why I like having Freddie on. Freddie makes it fun. Oh, calm down, Jason. As someone Asian, I would just like to say. Ah, what the hell, dude? No. <laughs> he works here. He could get us kicked out. Uh, did my, I? I think I have a migraine. <laughs> I didn't get you in the eye, did I? I was aiming. That is close to the you eye. got him in the temple. I was you could have killed him. I was aiming for his eye. Killed him. I mean, what? Terrible. I wasn't aiming for his eye. I mean, anyway. Jeez. Sorry. We don't. Sorry. I feel, okay. I feel like that general from Once Upon a Time in Mexico, he was shot in the head and left for dead and came back and killed Freddy, some eye. <laughs> would it make you feel better if I shot Danger? I mean. Shut up, Freddy. Uh, no, you already no, no. shot me, sir. I, I grazed you. You already hit me, sir. So you already had your one for I the gra- night. I grazed. You don't restrict how many shots it's I get. Be like Matrix style. I got five darts. That's how many shots I get until I run out of darts. Sorry, I'm sorry. Poor it's guy. been a rough. It's been a rough week. Okay. Well, I I can imagine not being able to get your drone and all. <laughs> You're gonna give me that. He's gonna spy for Sasquatch. Yeah, exactly. He wants. He He's wants. He's gonna recruit the guys from Duck Dynasty. Today we're hunting Sasquatch. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, today is actually Billy Boyd's birthday as well. Billy Boyd? Yes. Billy Boyd. Yeah. You know, the seed of Chucky. Oh, wow. Mm, <laughs> also. The right. most importantly, the seed of Chucky. The seed of Chucky. Lord of the Rings, you jackasses. He was Pippin. <laughs> oh, yeah, but I mean, yeah. no one knew him till seed of Chucky. Chucky, exactly. Uh, really? Little Pip. S- seed of Chucky. Happy yeah. birthday, Roll little seed Pip. Seed of Chucky. Don, no, Dominic Monaghan has a better... Actually, you know, Dominic Monaghan's got a more interesting career. He's got that show where he plays with animals now. Or plays with... Bish, or with uh, You're going off on the... Poisonous you, stuff? No, no, no. Bad topic. Just shut up. What the hell... Okay. I, I got a gripe. Gripe. Yet again. Gripe. What in the capital F-U-C-K is up with Lobo? Oh, you mean Stephanie Meyer Lamo Lobo? Yeah. See, Lobo is supposed to be, in my opinion, no, 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 no. he's supposed to be more like Freddy. This I mean, this guy like, looks like a. I pulled the hair down because I'm uh, gonna uh, be I'm gonna be Lobo for Halloween just so people know. At one point, he was cool, and didn't look like a Twilight character. I yeah. I saw this redesign, which the other three redesigns, the one with the little short gloves and the fur and the fur edged coat. Did you see that one? You mean yeah. Pimpbo? Pimp. <laughs> Um, yeah, I was. Uh, I was like, see, Lobo's supposed to be wearing like a, a leather bike vest. He's supposed to look like a look like he was well, from Kiss. Well, first well, we I had mean, the selection. He looks we, like Lemmy from Motorhead. Exactly. And Kiss had a baby. Exactly. And the thing is, now they've made him look like you know a Sparkle Pyre. Sparkle Pyre. Well, wait a second. Wasn't wasn't there another Lobo in the new Fifty Two that supposedly this lo the, this Lobo is going after because he's some sort of imposter? Life Actually, I uh, <laughs> Rick made a good point before we went on camera. Yeah. He said this redesign is possibly due to um, they couldn't get the Lobo movie off the ground. So they had to make it more visually appealing. Dwayne yeah, Lobo. Dwayne Johnson. So what, are they going to get like Jared Padalecki to play Lobo? <laughs> like, I'm from the CW. Yeah. Oh, my God. I'm oh, the man. man. Are they going to get Got like, hunt Jensen down Ankles Superman. from uh, Supernatural? Jensen, <laughs> Jensen Ankles from Supernatural. I, you know, all, all kidding aside, I really like those guys. Yeah. I think I, I've always wanted to make a movie called Kill Billies. Yeah. Where you would make those two pretty boys like the ugliest looking SOBs on the planet, mm-hmm. and they ride pigs in the battle. <laughs> <laughs> Giant hogs. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, Ladies and gentlemen, Freddy. Well, yeah, there is a okay. talk. Um, that this is the real Lobo, and uh, he's um, hold on. I'm the original Psycho from Sarnia is not the because Lobo the right actually one. has already been in the New Fifty Two universe. Yeah, he has. Yeah. But now, since they made this design change and they're making him, you know, look. Freddy. Yeah. Is this a case of the spider clones like all over? Oh wait, I found the picture of the other uh, design. Hang on, I wanna. Was oh he, my goodness! With the fuzzy boots. No, he had heels. Hold on, I'll just go ahead and... Can I make this? Oh, so he was a woman. Here are the three designs beforehand, and this one, he by far, anorexic. is what the what the hell is this, yeah, man? Yeah, dude. He's got a fur-lined coat, and he's got on prominent heels. Look, so basically, he's a woman. I know he's worked in comics before, but Gerard Way from MCR shouldn't design Lobo. I'm just saying. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but actually, um, writer uh, Marguerite Bennett has responded to some of the criticism. What did Marguerite say? I might be saying his name wrong, and if I am, is it I Margaret? Really don't care. Margaret. 
He said, the Lobo that you've seen so far in the New 52 is not who you think he is. Right. In this one shot, you'll be introduced to the real Lobo, a ruthless killer. Lobo is on a quest to kill the man who has taken his <clears> name. <throat> In this design, he updated Lobo's facial tattoos were by adding laser edges to his blades and gloves and giving extra strength with their mechanical usage. Lobo has been transformed into a lean, mean killing machine. If that is the case, why am I not why am I not afraid of him? Maybe he's been. And why do I think I would just walk away CW. laughing? Oh, I also um <laughs> Hold on, uh, let me pop see. Up on Arrow. Yeah, I hope you on Arrow that this this upcoming season I'm somehow. here to kill you, Oliver. <laughs> Actually, the that, that previous statement I read came from Bob Harris, uh, DC Editor-in-Chief. Oh, this one is from writer Bennett, who said, Dear Internet, which has called me some very undearing names today. I was not in charge of the Lobo redesign. Ben Oliver was not in charge of the Lobo redesign. I wrote my script, and after it was completed, I was shown what the new character would look like. For the record, the images you've seen, Ken Rockefeller's designs and Aaron Cooter's cover, are not what Lobo actually looks like in the book. I respectfully disagree with the decision to release that image. When you get go to your comics on Wednesday, September 11th, before you buy it, if you buy it, pick up Lobo and read the first four pages. You can hate me by page two, but if I do have, I'll hate I, it by page one. But if I do not have your attention by page four, you don't have to read something of mine ever again. Really, that's a great man. That's a great offer. And it is Marguerite, by the way. Uh, it is. A, it, she's. A, it's a girl. Oh. Okay, so this then again we get into the discussion of. What were we having the discussion about? Apparently, about women she's saying this is not it. This is not the design. Maybe, maybe we'll be surprised, and he'll be badass Lobo all over again. He'll be Lemmy. Is this? Is this he'll just Lemmy? Lemmy Bo. Why do I have a feeling that this is just like DC just screwing with us further? After you know, okay, you guys want to have a, a meltdown over Affleck? Okay, here we're gonna do this. The son of Krypton. It's, it's a, the son <laughs> of Krypton. It's a, it's a false flag. That's what it is. False flag. False flag. <laughs> Jeez. Ah. Uh, anyway, sorry. Had to get that gum out of my mouth. You're welcome, by the uh, way. I was che- well, I was like, you know, don't give me gum before broadcasting. Anymore. You seem so sad. Gum cheers you up. Gum doesn't cheer me up. <laughs> and you, you have minty, fresh breath now. Booze cheers me up, which unfortunately I have to go into work I mean, after I, this, so I can't drink during this show. This never stopped you. Yeah. Never stopped me. Never stopped Chris. Never stopped me. This is but this is I, corn liquor I'm drinking right here. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, this no seems shine. like uh, this seems like a little bait and switch. Guys, don't don't judge yet. Go get the comic. Yeah, after I give you my money. I'm just gonna read it. The mm-hmm. comic and the it's comic like, book. I'm guys, like, ah, guys, go. Yeah, do it here. Uh, <laughs> guys, just wait till the ch- it comes out and read it, and then tell us what you think. Don't judge yet. How about I go ahead and just judge right now? Judge, judge, judge. Screw your screw your redesigned Lobo that looks like something out of Twilight, with his friggin' blue hair. It looks like a Jason. good character. It just doesn't look like a good Lobo. Jason is just really upset about this, man. I, I am you, actually. You upset. really look. You really look upset. I, I mean, I know normally we joke around, but you really look seriously upset Lobo about this. Is one of one of the characters I do enjoy. If they're gonna make him look like someone skinny, they should have made him look like Ozzy or something. I just I don't see this. I I, I cannot. Rob Halford. I, I, I this yeah, is he's ta- Rob Halford. This is worse than the Affleck thing for me because it's just not Lobo. Batfleck. Jason, do you need a hug? Oh, put your gut away. Go put ahead. Put it Go ahead, hug me. Come here. You need a hug. Come on. We love you, Jason. <laughs> <laughs> hey, look, it's it's the least I can do after making me watch that that horrid movie we're going to be doing on Saturday. I just hate they couldn't want, get. What do you, you want? Oh, Samurai Cop. <gasps> no way. Oh God, <laughs> I'm only been able to get a half hour through it. That's that's how bad this have, thing have is. Have you guys heard of Kindergarten Ninja? It's the one movie that the budget's so low that instead of paying to do um, slow motion in post production, that they actually just did it on set. Really? Ooh. And then like they, act, one of them accidentally trips a little bit, so it, he goes real fast, real quick, and stops. <laughs> wow, that's pretty. Yeah, you okay there, Jason? I'm fine. Just are, are you okay? By the way, everybody, we, Jason, we, I know you're upset about that, dude. I, I have to agree with you. You know, to me, Lobo is one of those, one of those epitomal DC characters. That is who he is. He's the psycho from Zarnia. He is the he is the intergalactic badass. And He's now Boba DC- Fett with sustenance. Yeah, exactly. Boba Fett with a big pair. Yeah. And um I'm not feeling it. I'm just not. I, I just but I'm I mean, you know, look at it this way. If they do take Lobo and they do take a big crap in the hand with it, you know what? You you have classic this Lobo to lean more, back on, buddy. This is more of Lobo um well, this is more DC mismanaging characters, honestly. Agreed. And like I said, 
I am not the biggest DC fan. Make I my mean, Marvel. They got, I think they got the Warner Brothers problem right now. Like, yeah. Oh, okay, throw money at it. So, I mean, we need some story on page two and to throw money at it. Yeah. Oh, you want to... Let's let's just... Oh, here, let's make a special like, effect on page they're, five. They're, they're going to start doing is they just start printing dollar bills on yeah. the page. <laughs> I... Yeah. For such a for such a character that has the following that Lobo has, they for the, the the fans they do have of Lobo, why would you do this? Just this, it and honestly, I'm with Rick. I believe it's they want to make this character more appealing for the big screen because they couldn't get this movie for made. For so, the for the for the PG and PG thirteen audiences, not only in the United States but worldwide, because yeah. international Golly box office. Gee, is I can't wait for PG Deadpool. <laughs> now we got PG Lobo. Ooh. If they, It'll be it, the best movie ever. No, nah, there's. <laughs> I think Marvel has, has learned from the uh, management of the. Thanks, uh, Fallout Boy. Appreciate that. <laughs> I think Marvel has learned from the management of uh, Deadpool from the last Wolverine movie. Yeah, that but that's not Marvel. That's Fox at that. Yeah, point. Fox. I'm sorry. Fox, sorry. Fox, that Fox is having the same I stand problem that Warner Fox Brothers doesn't learn is a having. damn thing. Yeah, Fox doesn't learn anything. Like um, I'm all for Days of Future Past. The only thing that kind of threw me off is like, I, don't be, don't get me wrong. I love the guy, but Boulevard Trask isn't a midget. Yeah. I, don't, I don't really. Now, now granted, Peter Dinklage, love I'm okay with. Knights of Bad Aston. But. The movie that never will oops. be. What movie? Knights of Bad Aston. Yeah, man, and that's that's so a bummer tier. tier. That's a tier. That's that Indian tear coming down my eye. <laughs> However. Like, John uh, Lynch, come back. <laughs> but I, I'm I'm okay with Peter Dinklage. I actually am. I'm with, with the choice name was Boulevard Trask. No, he's not. A little I, also, say, I also don't like the the two two face thing they did where they're like, oh well, Avengers two got Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver, so do we, and we've already cast him, even though Quicksilver's not in Days of Future Past. If anybody's yeah. read the comic, like this movie's just shoehorned with like mutant upon mutant. They did the same mutant. thing with X. Well, they did the same thing with First Class, so that's their that's what they're going with. <sighs> they did the same. Hey, they Can't did it already. It, they they care not for your continuity. Nope, sorry. They don't care about who was in whatever <laughs> universe. Yeah, Look <laughs> now, now, now. If you know, let, let's put it this way: if, if Professor Charles Xavier has a has a really awesome seventies mane, man, he's got nice, yeah, he's got nice hair. You know, uh, he's nice be, hair and bell bottoms. It's all good, man. It's gonna be like polyester, that, polyester with the butterfly uh, collars. You it's know, it's gonna be like that episode of the IT Crowd where Roy gets in a wheelchair and she's like, "Can I ask how you got crippled?" I said. <laughs> <laughs> Professor X is just gonna be like, yeah, exactly. You came from the future, man. Yeah, he looks like he's a little high in that oh, picture. He does. He does. Chase McAvoy like looks raggedy. high. It's a, ho- it's a hobo in a nice wheelchair. Exactly. That's like that's the sequel to Hobo with the Shotgun. Hobo in a <laughs> nice, nice wheelchair. wheelchair. <laughs> I wonder what's the deal. What's the deal with the uh, whatever? I guess the seventies. You know. Hey. Yeah, it's seventies X Men, so they all have to wear like you know their you know Wolverine has to have the chops and the, the uh, bottoms and the bottoms and uh and you know look. Uh, you know, I, I thought the plot was that somehow dinner. Wolverine is going to go back. I thought Wolverine was like going to go back in time or something. I was Gotta go something. back in time. Yeah, I think that's what the whole plot is, is that Wolverine goes back to prevent something from happening. He basically causes a butterfly effect situation. Uh, which, something like that. You know, which screws up the future and brings on Boulevard Track. Well, it's going to bring back Rogue for Professor X. Yeah, <laughs> I'll tell you what, man. I got to say this. He, he, we, I, we were just mentioning him. McAvoy is rocking the sweet dude, man. I wish I... Dude, he's rocking it. He's well, rocking a I sweet mean, do, man. There are a few of us who can. Yeah, I wish I was like don't Freddy. I could grow don't it, do man. That. Don't don't do that. Stop that. What? No, I'm talking about Freddy. Oh, leave 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 Frederick alone. Hey, he's on the My show. My name is actually Dave Mustaine. <laughs> <laughs> are you as crazy as Dave Mustaine? No. You got the crazy theory. <laughs> mm, the government's out to get me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, getting getting this train back on track. Yeah, I'm. I'm not really. I don't know. I'm not really entirely sold on it yet. I'm gonna have to see some. I'm gonna have to see some actual meat in that sandwich. I mean, see. I'm not gonna lie. At the end of Wolverine, like spoilers for anybody who hasn't seen it. Yeah. Post- they, they, if you haven't seen it, no mercy. In three, po- yeah, two, po- one. Post credit sequence. Wolverine's in an airport. Oh, he can't get through the metal detector. Oh, Everybody look, it's, freezes. Oh, look, it's Magneto. <gasps> and Professor X. Oh, and there's a Trask ad on television. Oh, Trask Industries that. ad. And then it's over. But for that brief period of time. I was a little kid again, like, oh boy, Wolverine and Magneto are go. Oh, it's gonna happen. And it was, it was awesome, man. Uh, you like, know what? Bringing I'm, Patrick I'm Stewart back to life, to me, kind of was more of a, uh, we're correcting a mistake we made. But that was the weird thing was they. That's the that's X-Men, the ultimate retcon. They, they reference X Men Three so much in that movie, but at, if you ever watch the post credit scene in X Men Three, 
He he switches bodies with that the guy in X-Men Okay, 3. he switches minds. He switches yeah, well yeah, but like his uh, body's destroyed like And somehow he chooses he finds a body that's exactly like the one he had. Data, I need a new body. Yeah. <laughs> like See, that's where we're getting into the Go to Red or Dutch. <laughs> uh, anyway. I look at it like this so is um yeah, I'm I'm going to have to see the proof. It's it's like the same concept with uh with a lot of these films, man, with with uh, World's Finest, I'm about to see the proof. I'm about to see it for myself. I'm down for an X Force movie. I could see that. I'm, I'm I don't know. I'm actually I'm actually through with uh, with Fox and everybody else. Stop it! Stop it now! Okay. Just give these okay. properties back to Marvel because they're just trying to make they're just trying to make money now. And product. Now, granted, Wolverine was okay. Mm-hmm. The Wolverine was all right. We'll never see Galactus. We'll never see anything good from Fantastic Four. I love Josh Trank. Chronicle was awesome, but with Fox behind it? Nah. No. And I remember when Rise of the Silver Surfer came out, I was so excited because there's a whole interview in Wizard Magazine I was where too. the director, Tim Story, was like, yeah, we've done like six different designs on the Galactus helmet. And I waited that whole movie. And you didn't see you get, it. You get like a shadow. And it was like, it was the outline of someone giving me the finger in that movie exactly it was like freddie everything you believe in love in sucks and this is what the movie audience wants what you're saying in in a sense freddie got fingered yes okay just check it except no tom green okay exactly (laughs) all right so getting okay yeah um yeah i'm i don't know Fox, Fox. I, I will say. Uh, I mean, they lost their most lucrative franchise already. That's why they're holding on for dear life. Yeah. By the way, I gotta say, what does everyone think about Star Wars Episode Seven being shot in thirty-five millimeter? I'm all for it. Cause. Yeah. Oh my cares. God. That really blows my mind. I, I respect JJ, but I'll say this: JJ's got to do two things. A, he's gonna have to be. Well, Disney's probably gonna force his hand on this. He's gonna have to be a lot more open with his set. Do a lot more stuff with it. Do kind of what Lucas did with. So are his, you know, diaries. Yeah. And two, um, get rid of the lens flare. There, there cannot be any lens flare. I'm sorry. That's just got to go. Lens flare has no place in the Star Wars universe. It doesn't. I, I can go with that. No, I think it's fair. Uh, I think it's kind of one note myself. The whole lens flare thing. So. Yeah, that's that's like his that's like his his um, signature his signature thing. Blinding me is your signature. Well, it's like you know Hitchcock appeared <laughs> as a character. Hitchcock appeared in some size, shape, or form in whoa, all whoa, his films. Whoa, 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 whoa. You're not making a comparison. To no, Catherine. I'm not. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, is that each, every director has their own little thing. Like Hitchcock would appear in his own films. Okay. Um, Tarantino. Kevin, yeah, Car- yeah, Tarantino would always be some ignorant, you know, some just total arrogant asshole in every film he does. Well, okay. That's just Tarantino. Then, then there's the one Tarantino cameo where he's a blind priest and little Nicky. That's right. You what make is- the Lord <laughs> very nervous. <laughs> I saw that on like some some website this week this week about like oh famous actors didn't know where these. I totally knew that was Quentin Tarantino, and I don't care. I mean, yeah, do oh, and uh, yeah, little Nicky. Yeah, also it was an Adam Sandler movie. Who you know. Gives a I like it. I'm cold. Oh, Dad. Dad. Oh, shut this up. Will always be my home, sweet home. Gentlemen, <laughs> look. I will start shooting. I oh, really calm down. Don't tell me to calm down. Calm. <laughs> I got four more. You know what? If you do more of that, you're not getting anything from me this weekend for food truck at uh, at Anime Fest. I was gonna buy you stuff. I was gonna get you food this weekend. I was gonna be nice. So you're saying friend. I was. You were. Oh, so I'm not getting it now. No, because you shot me. Well, I have nothing to lose. <laughs> you're a mess. <laughs> Dick. I guess I got nothing to lose then, huh, Danger? Not really. Danger. Actually, danger if you want to get me a danger. if you want to get me a fig arts uh, uh Red Ranger from their new I line. will have to see how much that costs because I'm mighty engines Sorry, I already bought turbo it charge oh, for more. Go <laughs> <laughs> Why are you guys making Well, movies? look. I, I'm just singing uh, the song. I'm celebrating. If you enjoy, look, and I look at it like this, you enjoy the Rangers. You enjoy all their iterations. I enjoy the, I, I, I'm a sucker for giant. Even the animal ones. Giant cheesy monsters uh, fighting giant robots. Look, I know you like Super Sentai, and I respect that. That's very cool. And like I said, and for anybody that has anything to, neg- to negatively say I about I never it, have anything negative to say. 20 years. Yeah. 20 years. And even longer in Japan. Of using, and I, I love that the whole concept of the show is using basically stock footage of, you know, Sentai, G, you know, Sentai series in Japan and just rewrapping, you know, a plot around it. I did see one disturbing fact. The original series, the actors, 
Never one fight scene in costume. That's right. Amy Jo Johnson never fought. Billy never fought. That's all right. Amy doesn't need to be getting her hands dirty. Amy Amy Jo Johnson was good on uh, what's that show? Uh, the other one that she's on, uh, not Counter Strike Counter. I don't care. Flashpoint. Oh, yeah. yeah she's on Flashpoint. She well, was actually know, she's part of the uh, the Metro uh, Toronto Metro Response Unit. Matt. Well, that one, uh, the chick from the newest Power Rangers series, she <laughs> was uh, the girl from Cabin in the Woods. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Well, we're about to go to a break, uh, but I do have this to share. This week we did actually uh, get together and filmed us a little skit. Yeah, a little sketch comedy. Uh, the, I, I love these because these are actual conversations that uh, our angry, our resident angry artist Jefferson has. And we just decided to go ahead and just film it. He's, he's very angry. So we're going to go ahead and do this. We're going to get to some music and we'll be back uh, 10 minutes, guys. You're watching SC and S Live. Enjoy the kids. show. Now, put 
your hands up like this For all the vigilantes in the streets taking a risk For all the heroes undercover ducking, pressing the pigs For all the villains that he's even on that doomsday tip That's how we do it Superpowered MC who can spit That's how we do it Superhuman on the tracks that I flip Yeah, cause you ain't seen it quite like this Because that's how we do it in the 616 Okay, fine. But only if you swear not to hit me anymore. I swear I won't hit you anymore. And also swear to only speak in rhymes. Speak in rhymes all the time. I swear. Adventure time. Grab your friends. We'll go to very distant lands. But take the time. Defend the human. The fun will never end. Adventure time. Hey, we're gonna go on an adventure. Hey, you wanna go on an adventure? Come on, you wanna go? She gives me a look, man, it gives me a rush Hold up. More adventure, grab your sword and your backpack Grab a best friend, cause you know we'll have some laughs That might last forever, even if the world ends And the magic comes back, if we never do again So do all those bad guys and people with bad habits Come and catch a ride on the knuckle train of this planet Stark, he's got a grave that he's digging And it's fitted for the villains, and I'm checking the clock You know what time it is Adventure time, grab your friends We'll go to very distant lands
ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to hour two of SCNS Live. And like we started the show, I'm by myself again. Remind me to murder my broadcast partners because they ain't here. Danger actually went to go get a pizza while we're on the air. We have like a 10 minute break and he went to go get a pie. So, yeah. Who do, what kind of organization do we have on today's show? Anyway. My apologies. Anyway, well, we're going to go ahead and move into some uh, super cool nerd news. Not sure where, is that if that's Danger walking through the door with a damn, nope, that is not Danger walking through the door. <sighs> anyway, so our first story we're getting to, uh, Joss Whedon has weighed in on Age of Ultron and um, kind of on Batman too. Excuse me. Um, I had a thought there and uh, suddenly lost it, so I'm going to go ahead and there's a very large <laughs> Your can's broke I think you broke my cans. Anyway. Domo no break. You're having some real problems there, Domo. Domo, domo break dance. Domo no break. Oh, jeez. Hang on. I'm going to help you out. No, I, 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 I got this. You go ahead and get I, that together. I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, Hello. Domo. Return uh, for surprise engagement at Final Lone Star Comics. New comics broadcast of SCNS Live. How you doing, Domo? Good Domo you, good. Domo eating healthy. Domo have banana. Ah, I was wondering. I, was, I thought you just happened to see me. Oh, my God. You're No, 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 no. You can't. This not work. It well, not if you could actually you. close your mouth, it would probably work better. My but, wife say that, too. Domo has made an appearance on screen. <laughs> hey, Domo, I got this broadcast partner named Chris Danger who decided to run off and get a pizza while we are in the middle of the show. Mm, Domo got hungry, ran off, decided to get Chris Danger. I, I would pay you to go beat the crap out of Chris Danger right now. But anyway. Um, Will you pay me enough for me to buy a $1,000 drone that Domo wants on the internet? I want the $1,000 drone. I'm getting that one. Oh, my God. Uh, Domo, let me ask you. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get to this question. Uh, uh, there's been a lot of uproar this week about uh, mm -hmm. uh, stupid things in the news, as I like to call it. You mean the news? I, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't want to really call this news. But what do you think about Miley Cyrus twerking at the VMA? Domo feel that. Oh God, this is going to be good. Domo feel that twerk is an underappreciated cultural phenomenon. <laughs> A cultural phenomenon. Yes. Actually calling it a cultural phenomenon. Yes. Do you think there's this a This same culture that made South Korean man last year big superstar for equally idiot dance? No, I'm going to go ahead and say Psy is a lot more uh, entertaining than um, Miley Cyrus. But Miley have more Twitter activity than Psy. Okay. I'll give you that. Granted, you know, if I was, yeah, and I, popular, more popular is better in modern society. Do you think people are uh, uh, pretty much making uh, a mountain out of a molehill on this because she is a? Uh, Don't talk about her breasts like that. <laughs> well, she ain't quite at mo she's not quite at mountain status yet. I'm just saying, and she's 20. I'm gonna go ahead and point that out that she's a 20 year old girl doing this, and who really cares what a 20 year old is doing? Her dad. <laughs> I think the funniest thing I saw this weekend was a this week was a meme of a it was her doing her twerk on Robin Thicke and there's like a ghostly head of Billy Ray Cyrus just looking on so ashamed <laughs> by the way I used to love Robin Thicke on Growing Pains he was the best dad on television I think we're talking about a different Robin Thicke anyway in the thick of the night I I honestly do not I, I, I see a lot of people talking about, oh, well, you know, why are we talking about this? And Syria is about to get bombed and everything. Um, I, I, I do wonder why Danger! somebody. Danger! <laughs> Hello, sir. Domo. Sorry about that. Yeah. Domo, forgive. Oh, you sorry yeah. son of a. Domo being entertained by vision of Miley Cyrus twerking. Okay, twerking, twerking, twerking. Danger, do you, Danger, do you think that 
there's been a lot more um, crap about this Miley Cyrus this you week. You know, uh, good question. No, no, no look, we're not giving this a whole lot of thought here. Honestly, um, Tom will never give anything a whole lot of thought. Dude, it's it's MTV. Everybody's trying to. Push I didn't see anything that I wouldn't normally see. Uh, at well, the club. Actually, I, did, I honestly didn't watch it. <laughs> I just saw the. I don't have MTV anymore. I don't. I'm, it's not. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, but you do have the internet, so I'm pretty sure you've seen every meme out there. Which, like I was telling Domo here, my favorite one was Domo. the was her uh, doing her thing on Robin Thicke, and then the ghostly head of Billy Ray Cyrus looking very displeased. Domo did that. not know Billy Ray Cyrus passed on. Yeah, he's he he's one with the force now. Yeah, we think he is. I think I'm gonna find that one just because it was that funny. Or does or he be, get to be young when when he merged with force like Hayden Christensen? Uh, we well, that's a good question. And or does he have to go in as, as decrepit relic like Yoda but serious, has and there, Ben? Has there just been way too much That's thought depressing. into this whole thing? Because um, the girl's 20 years old. Who really cares what a 20-year-old She's is She's legal. I didn't see anything I wouldn't have normally seen on uh, the, Not in Utah. In the MTV Awards. And damn it, I cannot find that picture now. Yeah, she's, it's, it's, you see it at the club. And ain't my thing, but, you know, to each their Do own. Do you go to clubs? Do yeah. you put your hand up? I'm going to go ahead and say... Uh, butterflies fly away. Not in my head like yeah. Moving in my hip like yeah. He's he's going here, sir. I found it. <laughs> what did they put in your nanner there? I found the picture. Sir, they put something um. in your nanner. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand why, why people actually care about this crap, though. I don't. It's... <sighs> it's Let's... Perez Hilton needs somebody else to be mad at. I feel like I, I just wanted to talk about it just because uh, everyone has been talking about it. And then, of course, you have the blame of, you know, well, you should be talking about this because, it, God. How it, else she's supposed to have husband? She multimillionaire. Uh, she intimidate yeah. men. She needs to yeah. do some swats because she got a flat butt. All right. I'm just saying. You're saying she. How she, can you tell? She uh, ha, she doesn't have a lot of junk in her uh, trunk, because sir? It was, because I've seen <clears throat> hundreds upon thousands because. Of Careful pictures. now. <laughs> I've seen hundreds upon thousands of pictures on Facebook of people making fun of her for this crap. So, yeah. I would just go ahead and say, let's stop making a big deal out of this whole thing. Let's Do she need to go back to hoe down, throw down? Yes. Like, the, girl, the girl needs to go down doing some squats is what she needs to start doing. Okay. She transitioned from Hannah Montana to Miley Tijuana. Uh, I, I guess I don't. Oh, wow, that was awesome. <laughs> Tomo. Damn. <laughs> Let's. How about, I feel how as about, though I should have. Rec- I feel as though that should be like recorded somewhere. Oh wait a minute, it's recorded. It recorded. Yeah. Um, you not turn my mic off like awesome. your co-host. Yeah, that was more Freudian. Like I said. Anyway. Or co-host. Hey, hey, now. Hey, now, <laughs> now the co-host. Sir, sir, sir. So anyway, yeah, no big deal. Uh, let's just get off of Miley Cyrus's. <laughs> 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 so to speak. Oh my. Hey, let's let's do some comic book news. What have you got, buddy? Well, I got a story you posted. I think it's kind of cool. Why are you taking my story? Before you move on to news, Domo just like to say, Domo appreciate SCNS Live for all the support. We appreciate you. Yeah, we definitely Thank appreciate Thank you for that. allowing Domo to come and eat banana. You can eat your banana anytime, sir. And fantasize about Mario Cyrus's butt. Oh, there's nothing to fantasize about. Not, not much really. You'll be, flat making, butt. you'll be making most of that. Like out. a flat bottom <laughs> boat. Oh. There's Once you go flat, like you never go back. It's it, like that. It's pretty. No dingy. one ever said that. No oh. Domo said signing it. off from Lone Star Comics and Plano. See you later, sir. Bye, Domo. Domo. Hey, Domo. Bye, bye, Domo. Adios, buddy. Where All right. Oh, okay. Awesome. So let's let's pick a let's pick a story here. Oh, I get have one. one. Get some. Then, well, okay, okay now. Yes. Touch okay, on so one. well, we already know this week that uh, there was a leak concerning uh, the soundtrack listings for GTA Five, and it looks pretty awesome. Well, officially today. Huh? Yeah, you didn't hear about this? Apparently, Sony put out... This was around Gamescom late last week. Sony... Gamescom's awesome. Oh, it's awesome. We're going next year. We're going to Deutschland! Deutschland! Uh, I can't. You're not allowed in Deutschland? Uh, I got kicked out of Germany. You got kicked out of Germany? I gotta hear... Why why did you get kicked out of Germany? We don't need to get into all that. I can't go back to Germany. Does it involve, like, Lederhosen and... uh, No, not exactly. Anyway, keep going with your story. That's not important. All right, well, here. Okay, so... Uh, we all know last week that there was a little bit of a leak, including some art and some uh, list or track listings for GTA 5. Well, today was per Kotaku. 
It looks like the soundtrack, they, uh, Rolling Stone had got the scoop. And of course, this is from Kotaku, but according to this, Rolling Stone has gotten the scoop straight from Rockstar on the radio stations and the celebrity DJs are going to feature. The thing is, they're going to have, GTA 5 is going to have, of course, five, or 15 radio stations, two talk stations, 240 licensed songs, and Ooh. they have got some outstanding celebrity radio DJs, including Pam Greer. Oh, no. Yeah, really? Yeah, guess, uh, guess who, man? Uh, she's doing a soul station. Guess who else they got? Guess who else? Bootsy. Bootsy you Collins. Are, you are, you are. Doing an 80s funk station. And, and our favorite our favorite uh, guy, Mr. Mr. Yacht Rock himself, Kenny Loggins, hosting a classic rock station. You get the hell out of here. No. Are you serious, Danger? No, I'm serious. Uh, Vine will okay. It looks like, uh, of course, they got Vinewood Boulevard Radiar, which is modern thing, rock. Right? It's hosted by Stephen Pope and Nate Williams from Waves. East Los FM, which is going to be uh, uh, a uh, different types of Latino music. West Coast Classics. Guess who's hosting that, my man? DJ Pooh himself. What? DJ Pooh. <laughs> what are they? What are the associate members of NWA going to be doing that? Okay. Uh, it looks like they're also. Well, got there, if there's one thing the Grand Theft Auto games have done right. It is the choices of music. It is music. The the entertaining things that we hear out of the talk radio and everything. On. So yeah, this is. I, I like to see this trend continue. Now they've got a really cool. They've got really cool one that's called. Um, it looks like uh, flying. Low, they're also got one other station called Flying Lo, or Fly Low FM. Tyler the Creator. Uh, they're col- they're col- uh, they're collaborating with Tyler the Creator on this one for like original stuff for the game. So you've got not only this, but the first time GTA actually has a score. GTA game has a score. They're, they collaborated with um, Edgar Frost of Tangerine Dream. Yeah, because normally Jackson. if you're not in a car or anything, there's nothing playing. No, this is this is game soundtrack. And uh, speaking of game soundtracks, I, I don't talk- know if I want that. Well, it, a score. To to like get the high points, like you're on a mission or something. Oh, a sc- like a, a I thought score. you were talking about like music score. Go ahead. I'm like sorry. a music score, absolutely. Uh, wait a minute, no, no. They're writing a whole score to this game. So, because usually in Grand Theft Auto games, though, when you get out of the car, there is nothing playing except for the sounds of the city. Except you're going to get a score in this game for various missions, things like hmm. that. So to make okay. this game more epic, that's what it's. I might actually get this for my PS3 now. Shock, shocks. Um, speaking of games with great scores, and you and I have played already, is is the greatness that is Saints Row 4. Oh, God. I, I have to say this. I'm already about a third of the way through. i got to get that video out. That is pretty awesome. i got to tell you. Um, I, I, I was see what your president looks like. I was going. I, I kind of made him look like. Uh, I gave him a pompadour. He was kind of cool. I made mine look like me. Shut you up. know, I could say something so horrible. I'm not. I'm just not going to touch with the hunter. For, and put your gun away, Annie Oakley. Put them down, Annie shit. Oakley. All right. No, but no. Um, Saints Row the Fourth. I got to tell you, man. This originally this game was supposed to be a okay, add-on I'm, for Saints Row Three. I'm going to need those back. Here, those. you give them to me, Rick. I'll hold them. Safekeeping. <laughs> <laughs> I have three more. Away. Okay, so the game was. Put that away. You can't aim anyway. You, you do know Saints Row Four was originally supposed to be an add-on for Saints Row Three, right? That I was did, supposed to be a complete. And total I did hear out. that. Yeah, originally supposed to be an add-on. Of course, then the whole uh, the whole THQ situation Gosh, went down. Entrance. Deep Silver got uh, or got volition, and they decided to make it a whole game. Now the cool thing is, it's they're already getting, they're already working on great DLC. And there's a, also an amazing or great article on Crack.com today concerning uh, why GTA Four is not or excuse me Saints Row Four is the kind of game that the gaming industry needs to be making. Simply put, they hit a lot of nascent points, including the fact that it's the kind of game that just basically makes you feel you know, like, like a hero before, you know. Uh, what kind of points? Excuse me, I shouldn't have said we'll that. Nascent Not points? nascent. I'm sorry. We'll get to that. We'll sorry like about Just that. birthed? Yes, exactly. By the way, did anything interesting happen while I was gone? I saw like a giant dog with his mouth open twerking was, in the bathroom. Was, was yeah, it was kind of creepy, man. <laughs> did you put him down? No. No. Uh, in other video gaming news, uh, Go I got one um, uh, game that who are our own and Nazni Voles is missing right now because I miss she's a Nazni. Yeah, where is she? Uh, she actually forgot that we uh, were doing the show across America. America. We she, love you, Anazni. She's actually running a Justin TV broadcast alongside of ours, which I think we need to cut over. Why is she doing that? Because it was an accident. She forgot. She on. You know what? I'm not really mad because I think you um, should. Someone you should. needs a secretary. 
Yeah. I'm not mad because I don't think I, I, I know her character and I don't think she would do anything like that. He needs an story. Alfred Pennyworth. However, we're still gonna or make a Jarvis. Her, we're still gonna make Except. her pay for this. Now are uh, we talking are we talking AI Jarvis? Are we talking what, old school wait, bald have, Jarvis? Actually, have you guys talked about the news about Jarvis yet? No. Uh no we have not. We actually ah. haven't got to it. But anyway, in other video mm-hmm. gaming news, uh Borderlands two. The new level cap will be out uh, next week. Gearbox has announced the Ultimate Vault Hunter Upgrade Pack 2, which will raise your level cap to 72 and be out next week on September 3rd. Uh, the pack's going to cost you $5 and includes a Digistruct Peak Challenge, which offers an hour-long mission as well as a chance to fight a wide variety of Borderlands 2 enemies. So you, You've got to... You, you love that game. I really do. I, I, I really would like to get away from this game, but I can't it's because crack. it's actually that good. Um, Segue from cracked to crack. It's like the uh, and Miley Cyrus. It's it's honestly, um, I mean, it's it's the RPG and the first person shooter got together, had a couple drinks and had a baby. So it's like a chocolate and peanut butter moment. Is what you're saying, sir? Basically, yes. Awesome. I I um, I'll say this. Uh, I I know you enjoy that game. I I. I hate saying this. I've tried playing it. I just can't get into it. Well, that's your own fault. Well, that's and that's not a problem. I, I think it's a really cool game, and I'm proud. I, I like people that actually can get into it and play it well and have a great time with it. And I think it's it's capitalized on 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 a on a um, on a genre that really sorely needed a serious kick in the butt. And I, and I'll, I'll give uh, Gearbox this. They've stepped up their game and done it well. Speaking of other Gearbox game, does that a lot, by the way. Speaking of other gaming news, it was announced uh, late last week that uh, one of the most anticipated MBOGs of 2014, Yes Kids, is getting a huh? subscription fee. That's right. The Elder Scrolls Online, you're going to end up paying a subscription fee for. They're looking at $14.99 a month. A uh, game is probably going to retail around probably $59 US plus. Uh, uh, you will be getting, of course, I believe the 30 days free, and then uh, you will end up starting to pay $15. But the reason dis- beso- uh, behind this, according to Bethesda, is due to the fact that they would rather people pay, get all their content up at once, and not have to microtransaction. So, from a logistical standpoint, logistical that standpoint that works. Yes, um, a little disappointed. I, I got to tell you, I played the game here uh, at QuakeCon. You're a little disappointed in what, though? I'm a little disappointed in the fact they decided to go the path of uh, basically charging, you know, one, you know, charging the fee, or you're charging you the 59 bucks on top, and then making you charge you a a monthly fee. Uh, other games have actually, some other games have gotten away from that, including Secret World, which, yeah, it is microtransaction for various things, but you can play the game for life and earn stuff. Are they planning a lot of expansions and, and upgrades as they move forward with this, I though? have a feeling with uh, Elder Scrolls Online, which, by the way, takes place a thousand years before Skyrim uh, in the time frame, it, uh, or in the timeline of the games. Um, I got a feeling they will probably be pushing a be lot dynamic. of... Yeah, it's going to be dynamic. I, I, I played it. I will say this. It is it is really a good-looking game, even at this point, even though it's not going to be released until spring of next you year. You a comment or you have a story? Well, I'm just telling you. I'm just giving, I'm giving comment. It's great. We got, we got other things. We All right, got. let's talk about other things. What have you got? I don't know. What do I have? I got this one. Do you want to um, talk about a new superhero team? you want to talk about that one? Um, I want to talk about this one. Yeah, DC in another bout of what the hell. Um, <laughs> DC I knew has this announced was come up. a Justice League... Canada series to which I go didn't we already have uh, didn't Canadian superhero teams kind of go out of style with uh, Alpha Flight hey dude it's, it can't be as bad as the, as the, current, the uh, but the current Justice League of America title will be rebranded as uh, Justice League Canada and will feature a new team of heroes and um, they also, they also accompanied this with blame Canada this is not a joke I thought it was funny they had to do that uh, it sounds like a, uh, this is from a who is this? Um, Tell me it comes Jeff out the first Lemire, uh, Wednesday in April. Who says, it sounds like a joke and something like this would never happen. Yeah, but Jeff it Lemire. is actually yep. happening. And I couldn't be happier. I do want to create a, ru- a cool rural northern Ontario <laughs> headquarters for Justice League Canada. I don't want to spoil it yet. It's not a hockey rink, I promise. How can Although, you spoil course, it Justice did, League it did cross my Canada? Mind. It's, it's going to be a t- uh, their headquarters is actually underneath a Tim Hortons. <laughs> is this really necessary? I mean, yeah. take off to the Great White North, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's next? Like CSI Quebec? I mean, what do they what do they investigate there? Their like a bum drops a hot dog on a street. Yeah. yeah. All right, Danger, what have you got, buddy? What do I got? Oh, God, what do I have? Man, what do I talk? God. I don't know, but I don't want it. Well, you don't need it. Um, 
Let's see. I don't know if I can tell that story online. That story. <laughs> that story. I got. I'm telling that one from Linda. You could do that one because I, I see a lot of content from Linda here. Yeah. Yeah. She's been our new. Our new. Um, Is she a researcher? More like Linda finds something that she thinks is funny and posts it. So more like executive producer. I need I need to share this awesomeness with you guys. That's what that is. Okay. I love Linda. Hi Linda. Hi Linda. Linda. Do you want to do you want to talk uh, you want to talk uh, weird news of the week? Mis- I don't news, know. Go ahead. Wait, it's your Justice, news segment. Hold on. Justice League Canada didn't fall under weird news of the week oh, come on. or the I year. Mean, it, it is it is JLC, but you know JLC JLC. Oh, if not, I, I got more cooking over here, buddy. Well, let's talk. Hey, we were talking about uh, your your boy Robin Thick here a few minutes ago with Miley Cyrus. What's I got to do with anything nerd related? I don't know. I thought you might be interested in the story. It's just kind of uh, oh, simpatico ahead. in this situation. Okay. I got nerd stuff to get to. So oh, I know. It is nerdy. Okay. You know, here's the deal. You know, uh, th- one of the songs of the summer, Blurred Lines, also shares the title for <laughs> a, it's also a hit for an 86-year-old classic composer. Apparently, this guy, John Beckwith, he's a Canadian composer. Canada he did a again. he did a composition of the same name, a 1997 duet with harpsichord and violin. Not entirely like you know Pharrell doing something with Robin Thicke. So apparently, yes, this guy has gotten a lot of sales off name recognition only. So so people are confusing his song with Robin Thicke's song. Yeah, exactly. And they're getting harpsichords and violins. You th- deserve what you get, people, for yeah. buying Robin Thicke in the first yeah. place. What have I told you about putting up non-nerd related? Shit hey, that wasn't years. me. That was Linda. I mean, you had to pick it. <laughs> man, man up. Hey, I'm manning up, sweetheart. I got some good news, actually. You know what? Uh, I one of my guilty, back to him. Here you one go. of my guilty pleasure. These. Yeah, thank you. One of my guilty pleasure movies is the uh, the Spawn movie. By the way, just talking about guilty pleasure movies, I went and saw Starship Troopers on Riff Tracks. It was oh, amazing. I heard it was good. That's it was worth amazing. It. That's worth it. It was awesome. They're but redoing uh, it on September twelfth. But I, I think I must. I did that. actually when the first Spawn movie came out with uh, uh, Michael Jai White. I did enjoy it at the time. It and John Leguizamo and Martin Sheen. Was it the greatest movie? Hell no, no. no. Was it? Was it, was it very a true to the mid-90s character? Typical mid nineties comic book movie. Uh, yeah, it was very. De- but yet I went to go see it, and I enjoyed the it. The cape the was time. the most interesting character in the whole thing, and yeah. it didn't even get shown that much. Enough. However, Todd McFarlane says Spawn could shoot next year. Yes, Spawn creator Todd McFarlane could. is claiming that a new take on his Image Comics hero could be, or really hero, anyway, could be in front of the cameras by as early Anti-hero. as next year. Yeah. Who would we want to direct this? I'm tempted to say Guillermo, but I think everything cool should be directed by Guillermo. This is true, especially anything involving like creatures that have different designs. But and if they want to go with the, the, the horror, who do we want to have direct this? Wow. Um, hey, you know, Fred. I'd like to, I'd like choice. Hey, Fred. Fred. I'd like to see a Rob who Zombie. Should, uh, who should direct Spawn? Fred's and my you horror can't guy. Say, and you can't say Del Toro. And, so and, and I was actually sad. thinking of Rob Zombie. I would say Rob Zombie uh, Spawn. All right. Fred? John Carpenter. John Carpenter. God, no. Uh, oh. Escape from Spawn. God, they lame. Look, don't care <laughs> about that movie. That's a good movie. <laughs> but um, regardless, um, I think I just like caught up to a bunch of to a bunch of uh, chats in here. Anyway, um, uh, if they could actually do a small movie with the understanding they have how the title should go now, I, I want to see another small movie. I do. I think the character at the time when it was brought out was very uh, innovative and new. Mm-hmm. So I want to see a small movie. I'd like to see it done right too. And let's go ahead and just go for the R rating. Oh, absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. I'm not. Well, this is a new image. Do we want Al? Um, Al. Yes, we want Al Simmons. Yeah, Al Simmons. Yeah. yeah, we want we want the original Al Simmons. I agree. So that's my take on that. Danger, I'll take it over to you. you okay, got. let's see. Well, let's talk about. Uh, let's go back to gaming news. Um, well, have you seen this uh, abomination? Nintendo has uh, decided to launch. That's right, kids. Huh? Uh, bringing it up from FatherGamer.com. FatherGamer. Uh, apparently, Nintendo could you know, they, they just thought, hey, the 3DS wasn't crazy enough. Now they're coming out. That's right, kids, with the 2DS. So the, this is a sequel that has a lower number. Exactly. Oh, it's a prequel. Basically, it's going to be at one, it's a price point 129. It's a flippable game system similar to the 3DS, except there's no 3D on it. It's all 2D. So, you know, 3D was so you know, five years ago. Um, <laughs> Progress. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's an entry point. It's coming It's coming in two colors, red or blue. It's coming on October 12th at one twenty nine ninety nine. So, um, yeah, K- 
kids. Get in line. Get in line for your uh, for your two DS. I don't know. I, uh, uh, I, I'm, I, not, I don't I'm know. not interested. I, I'm out yeah. on. I'm out on Nintendo. I stopped handheld gaming when I stopped having to fly all the time. You miss Tetris though, don't you? You do. Uh, hey, hey, I had a PSP. And that little football game, right? Tecmo Bowl. Yeah, something like Tecmo that. Tecmo Bowl something for like Game that. Boy. Do not knock Tecmo Bowl. That was awesome. Because if you weren't, because as long as you could press the key, ba- as as long as you could press the ten control yard pass, fight. you were the best one on the on the field. All right. Hey, who doesn't like Irem's ten yard fight? I mean, come on, that's a classic. Anyway, <laughs> I got your ten yard fight or whatever. Yeah, you're making him mad now. Oh yeah, you're gonna well. bring out his cannon. Well, his anyway, cannon. Uh, I got one because Linda's stories are always awesome. Uh, from Jezebel.com. And I'm oh go, Lord, I'm sir. gonna go ahead and say <laughs> this one. <laughs> Family show. Family uh, show. <laughs> Can you, uh, oh, family show? Then I really shouldn't talk about that. <laughs> I'll, I'll wait a little bit until the story empties out a little bit. All right. We'll, get, we'll go back to that one. Yeah, because Freddy's no, here. Yeah, because yeah, anyway, uh, I do have this one. Um, Transformers 4 it has been filming here lately. Um, but watch some news out of that. Mark Wahlberg is going to be in it. We've seen some set photos. But we have some other news from it. Uh, <laughs> no, uh, let me see. This was from uh, the 23rd. But apparently they were filming a scene for the beloved characters, the Dinobots. Yeah. And Trance, what? Don't be grunting. It's yeah, Trance. Hey, they're not bad. It's the Dinobots, well, is, right? Does Michael Bay still have something to do with this? Unfortunately. Nah. Yeah. Nah. Just get off of Bay, okay? Just get off of his, you know. I'm, people, why does everybody hate the Transformers movie series? Why do I, why I, do I, I hate don't. Michael Bay? Let me count the ways. You know what? I will say this summer there was nice. There have been several iterations of the, the Transformers first, universe throughout the years. The first Transformers movie was really, really good and needed less parents. Instead, in the sequel, we got more parents and more stupid and more yeah. racism. And then the third movie, we just got more suck. I will say, I don't think, I, I I will say the third I, movie, I give, I give it this. At least it had Buzz Aldrin. No, I like the third movie. I, I'd like rather it had Buzz Lightyear. It had more, it had more bots, watch more action. Mouth. I <laughs> like a hero. Even as all the purists out there, the Star Command. All the purists out there say like, "Oh, you love Transformers, but you like the movies." Yes, I do because there have been so many iterate. There have been so many different universes of Transformers that I can appreciate another one. Hey, the new comic ser- series, um, More Than Meets the Eye, and um, Robots in Disguise, and Regeneration One are are excellent. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not hating on Transformers, but. Uh, really, uh, Michael Bay, Dinobots. That's not Dino. Yeah. That's not Dino. It's the Transformers. I'm not going to get you know uh, stunning cinema from this. But okay? hold on, are they just going to retcon this whole thing? Will it turn out that you know the because nope, they've it's established continuation. This? Okay, so nope, they're bringing no Dino. Retcon. Okay, so okay. No retcon. I, I'm confused now, but yeah, I'm just. That's not asking. unusual from watching a Michael I'm, Bay movie. I'm kind of asking, did they put Kelsey Grammer to this to class the film up a little bit? Probably. I mean, uh, Anyway, do you have a story, buddy? Ah, uh, jeez. Let's lay, let's 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 go to my favorite site. Hang on a moment. Sorry about this. Hold everybody. on. That 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 site. Why I can't, don't you I can't let you go to in here? Your, your favorite site. <laughs> You're uh, uncool. Let me bring it up. I'm going to blast here real quick. Got to find this story real quick. Yep. There's the idea for the kids' show I was working on. Huh? Okay, going to blast. What? Hang on a moment. I'm bringing it up. Internet slow. <laughs> that, never mind. Internet slow. Oh, jeez. We can always go back, back We're to waiting for you, Justice Canada, League really? Canada. Oh, uh, by, by the way, uh, by the it. way, just to let you know, um, no. just to let you know, Toys R Us did confirm Dinobots and Transformers 4. So. Yeah, that's already been confirmed. I know, I already confirmed that. Um, I, I love this. Now, we're all we're all BSG fans, right? Are we are we BSG fans here? Mm-hmm. All the way around. Considering you mention it weekly, but go ahead. Classic 1980. Okay, now, I Ron love Moore. this. Apparently, um, now I'm waiting for the story to load up. Oh, golly, come now, Internet. Well, let's just put it this way. Um, My internet's running fine over here. Sing, okay, sing la- a song. Okay, last week an article appeared in, a jan- in the Japanese language version of the official China Internet Information Center titled More- Four Major Trends in Aircraft Carrier Development. Well, the article pur- <laughs> purpose was to explore the way of future uh, designs for aircraft carriers. Well, apparently they decided to uh, claim the design of the Galactica was a... Chinese aircraft. That, there's, that Chinese, aircraft carrier. Carrier. there's that Chinese innovative spirit. I beg at work. your pardon. I am serious. They have claimed that they they are claiming. Oh, this we stole this idea. Give me their address. It's a batter star. Give me their address oh, right now. God, I'm going to make so many people. Oh, <laughs> hey! <laughs> Stop it. Batter star. Gashita. Sorry. Lighten up. <laughs> Every time. <laughs> Hi. I remember. <laughs> there's a small child. I just think it's kind of funny that they um. 
that they they stole the image from Zoic Studios, who basically was the guys who did the reimage for two thousand for the two thousand four mini series. Well, at least they still posted past. it up as their own. I mean. Of course, so. I, I'm thinking the Chinese government is pulling a lot of their news from the Onion these days as are, well. Are they <laughs> and their policies? Yeah. Are, are they planning on uh, developing some Viper fighters to go along with that? That would be interesting. Hey, I got another good story. I got hold a on, hold on, hold on. They could import that South Korean music guy, Psy. 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 Psy can do no wrong. Cylons. Well, let's also that was horrible. <laughs> Thank and you. you guys are horrible. Okay, well let's let's. I've got another one for you now. Um, Let's. Uh, Are they building the Enterprise too? Oh yeah. Now this is also from Blaster. Now physicists may have a new theory on space travel, and it might feel familiar. Now, um, according to this, it's no secret that many modern, modern technological marvels drew inspiration from works of fiction, in particular Star Trek. Um, who wouldn't want to emu- you know emulate you know transporters, uh, holodecks, replicators, even tr- even tricorders? The most important aspect of Trek rather, saludes us. I'd rather replicate Yeoman Rand, but anyway. Yeah. Uh, warp drive. Thank good. And now, apparently, um, <clears throat> according to this, this is via Yahoo News, apparently physicists haven't given up hope. A while back, they, they did mention the concept of a warp bubble as being a means to travel through space. But uh, apparently... I it, thought that was what happened after I ate pizza. Yeah, exactly. It looks like they've been doing some testing processes, and they think it might look like this really cool little image, right? Great. So they put a spirograph on. They the put internet. a spirograph and a football in the middle. See, look, it's a it's a football. It's amazing. So you know the whole concept of warp bubble. Yeah, it could happen, but yeah, it's it's just a little closer. Can I just say that one of my quibbles from uh, Star Trek Two Two that came out earlier this year is that if you can have intergalactic beaming from Earth to Kronos, then you don't need starships anymore. Because you yeah. can transport across the galaxy. Which uh, point from uh, Star Trek Into Darkness? Because he teleported halfway across. That's the what I'm saying. Universe. That's what I'm saying. Star Trek Two, Two. Yeah, yeah. I um I got a story because this is pretty. Uh, uh, we always do talk about technological breakthroughs, whereas uh, the measles virus had pretty much been um, pretty much seeing its way into extinction. Bye. It's my buddy hey, from sweetie. last week. Uh, measles had pretty much been. Um, you know, far and few between those cases, especially in the States. Uh, so when 20 cases of measles pop up in a county or city or from a single church. <laughs> yeah. Uh, apparently, Kenneth Copeland, who is a, uh, well, well, I do have my disagreements with religion. I do have them with televangelists who fleece people for a lot of money and then tell their flock, you don't need to get your kids vaccinated. Oh, he's one of those anti. Oh, has he been is telling he, people not to be vaccinated? Yes, they, the, is he the, doing the Jenny McCarthy? The church actually has backpedaled on this and said, "Like, no, 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 guys, guys, please get your children vaccinated." Wait, However, is he saying this because he thinks God told him not to get their kids vaccinated, or because he's afraid of autism and all that other stuff? Um, he's just said that uh, they need to rely more on the power of faith healing, and that oh, getting, like Christian and scientists. that injecting viruses into your children well that's just crazy talk those really shouldn't do that i i would also like to note that kenneth copeland has no medical training whatsoever yeah so apparently uh a bunch of people in his in his congregation decided you know what the past is right and did not vaccinate their children so we have 20 cases of 20 confirmed cases of measles according to the texas department of state uh state health services and at least eight of the patients are members of the eagle mountain international church uh, 15 right. of the cases, it's a wealthy community too. Eagle Fifteen Lake. of the cases yeah. are in Tarrant County, where the church is located. So yeah. yeah, we have an actual outbreak of measles going on currently because these people chose not to vaccinate their children based on what someone, mm. and I'm not talking religion here. Somebody with no medical training whatsoever. Because apparently he doesn't know how vaccinations work, how they inject a dead virus into someone. Yeah. So they can is that it? Is that like is that like the same question as how do magnets work? However, they have backpedaled it on it and said, "No, guys, you Sorry. should get your uh, your mm-hmm. children vaccinated." Little late. It, after yeah. after they said, "We never said that," and people found the video where he's he totally no this well, video here he totally said that. So now they're offering uh, vaccination services uh, as well. And that yes, you should get your children vaccinated because you somehow need somebody to tell well, you. This. Look, uh, I'm a I'm a I'm a I'm a man of faith, and I also consider myself to be a relatively you know man of standard, science. Standard, well, I, I appreciate science. You know, exactly. it, it makes things that I use like this microphone uh, and gravity. Um, but that that being that being said, I I don't go to my pastor 
uh, to get checked out to make sure I don't have heart disease. Yeah. And I don't go to my doctor for absolution. Yeah. So there's I keep you. the peanut there's butter me. in the peanut butter and the chocolate and the in chocolate. the chocolate. There was seriously something wrong with these uh, with some of these people because clearly not everyone in the church said, well, he's right. But there were a certain number of them that said that apparently thought well, he was. And I do still hold them accountable because somebody could tell me something. That doesn't mean I'm going to I, I, I risk like, my child. <clears throat> well, on the same note. This reminds Jenny me of the whole HPV thing from last year. But on that same note, Jenny McCartney a couple years ago tried to push this. Where oh, this one is. doctor. Yeah, I don't know why. Because that one doctor who wrote that paper had been debunked several times over and has had his medical license removed for giving false information. But if it's on the internet, it must be true. Yeah. Also, the first or time. Or if a celebrity some, says it. The first time someone told me this. It, Jenny McCartney says that I immediately countered with, hey, who is Jenny McCartney? I don't know who that is. I remember She's her from, actress, uh, and they described I all of, singled out. Well, they described all of Jenny McCartney's uh, accolades. And I said, and yet none of those are a uh, doctorate in anything. So why are you listening to this person? So I remember her from Single Out, man. And that's about Season it. Season one. I remember her from, um, you know, Stuff Magazine. Well, I mean, Dr. Laura is not actually a a, 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 a medical doctor. You know? She's an aerobic. She knows how to do aerobics. She's got her her doctorate in what, like English literature or something like that? I actually found this program where you can get a doctorate in theology, and I was considering getting it. Because all you got to do is pretty much Dr. Pay. Freddy. You have to MD. pay. But actually, the Reverend Doctor Freddy, the, 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 the good Reverend, which is like a Muppets Freddy. character, which is like a Muppets character that plays the piano. <laughs> but also, on top of my uh, ordained minister title, I could put Doctor in front of that as well. Doctor, anyway, Doctor, Doctor, Doctor. But well, that's doctor, my story. Doctor, Sorry, doctor, that ran doctor. a little long. Danger, you got one uh, cooking uh, away? I guess I'll find one. I want to talk about some comics this week. Let's. You know what? Let's do some comics. Cool. Comic talk. All that's right. Why we're here. Okay, all right. Because Rick has because a whole stack I do. right there. It's after all, the it is the final. New comics Wednesday from Lone Star Comics and Games in Plano. I'm kind of bummed out. Are they gonna Are they gonna tear this place down and turn into a Froyo you joint missed that or com- something? You missed that conversation. We are not We are not becoming a malicious now. Um, Never coming of uh, Pinkberry. No way. <laughs> well, okay, th- that might happen. Can we get a drive through liquor store? Hey, all right. That will happen. It is no, Plano. No, it's not happening. It is Plano. <laughs> um, Okay, so a few things. A few things I want to mention. Uh, I know we were talking about uh, Jack Kirby's birthday. Uh, Jack Kirby would have yes, been uh, ninety six today. He died in ninety four. I can't believe wow. that's been so long. And he'd probably still be working. Uh, the king of comics, and uh, uh, coincidentally, or or not today, uh, Alter Ego, uh, which is a fantastic uh, fanzine that's published uh, bi monthly, uh, has a tribute uh, to the history of the X Men, and of course, uh, Jack Kirby uh, was a seminal part of that. And uh, so this has uh, articles and uh, artwork. Um, that uh, let's see, where is Kirby in here? Oh my goodness, just so much awesome stuff. It's just amazing. Uh, but anyway, you can pick this up. This is uh, it's a little pricey. It's eight ninety five. It's a magazine that's actually still being published, and those are few and far between. Magazines. Um, Mag- yeah, they're these periodicals that come out periodically. Peri- uh, article? Uh, it's not your generation, hun. Uh, okay, <laughs> um, so um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run through a few of these um, really, really quickly uh, just to show you guys uh, mm-hmm. what all's go- coming out this week, what all's out this week, and I'll stop on a couple of titles. Uh, A Plus X, uh, mm-hmm. Volume 11, of course, is Ooh. spinning out from AVX, uh, which uh, actually did have an impact on the Marvel Universe that's uh, being carried forward into Infinity. Uh, and uh, if for those of you who've been reading X-Men, you know that Cyclops went just absolutely nuts. Um... Batman Incorporated, uh, their first uh, special, uh, is out as well. Um, fantastic. Greg Pax, Batman, Superman, Superman. The, the third one. Yep, and this is also out in a combo pack, uh, which includes the uh, digital content. I love that artwork. It's that is amazing. beautiful. Yeah, it's like nice cover. Um, Cap, uh, Escape from Dimension Z, out today. And the newest installment of Doctor Who, Prisoners of Time. Ooh. With the eighth Doctor, apparently. The eighth Doctor, yep. Who has been mysteriously... Yeah, missing. I'm yeah. glad missing you could somehow. recognize that. Um, Gambit, I, I love what the, uh, Marvel's done with Gambit. Uh, I'll tell you, um, with Gambit and Hawkeye, I mean, Marvel's actually made me care about some of the, forgive me, second-tier comic book characters. Yeah. Um, Gambit didn't quite work for me in X-Men Origins of Wolverine, but uh, it's a spectacular title. Oh, Remy LePeau. Um, wait, well, that just out of curiosity, do you think that that guy who played uh, who played Gambit in X Men Origins Wolverine, and who also was in Battleship, and um, uh, what's it, Taylor Kitsch is his name, and, and uh, he was in what was the other big bomb? Uh, John Carter. John uh, Carter. Do you think that's he's a ever? Damn shame. Do, it, that was a great movie, actually. But do you think he's ever going to get work again? Tabor, Taylor Kitsch is the um, is the Ted McGinley of comic book films. Ooh. He is. He's the Ted McGinley. He's the Saint say, Ted. 
Oh, that's that's interesting. I was gonna say Polly Shore, but well, that too. I mean, either um, <laughs> both bomb everything. <laughs> He's actually a pretty good actor, but you know, it's just terrible luck, man. Mm. Um, new Avengers, uh, new one out, and this uh, crosses in with Infinity. I am loving everything. I have a doctorate now. Oh God! Wow. Let the real doctor here talk very, about comic very, books. Very, very, very studious young man blew through that degree in six minutes. Thank you, Linda. <laughs> <laughs> what even um, six minutes? I have loved what Dark Horse has been doing with Conan, and, and by the way, also what Dark Horse Good has choice. been doing uh, King Conan, yeah, and, and also what Dark Horse has been doing with Star Wars, and and I will regret them losing the license uh, to that. Uh, but uh, things have to. That go is going to kind of be that's going to be kind of a bummer. They've they've done very very well. Uh, issue number four of the Last Zombie, which is excellent, excellent. Um, Lazarus, brand new Greg Rucka. Rucka um, was responsible for, I believe, what should now be considered the definitive Punisher origin story. Mm -hmm. Um, And uh, Lazarus is an excellent read. Um, Brand new Mass Effect out today. Ah. And also Mind the Gap, which is a slow-burning title out from Image. Uh, But uh, I love this this artwork, very very reminiscent of, uh, of The Matrix. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, Your favorite book, Jason. <laughs> My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic. Oh, Why do you put, say things like that when I put it away? Dude, put it uh, back in your pants. This, 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 was the, this is the biggest selling title that debuted last year, period. Wow. End yeah. of sentence. I am shocked. I, literally, I, I, I am shocked. Ponies that it, are a thing, man. I know, Ponies man. Ponies are a thing. Um, all that. <laughs> I did have somebody come in here a few days ago who was raging against that slut Fluttershy. I don't know uh, where to go with that. I don't know where to go with that. <laughs> this um, is kind of cool. Really? Yeah, Occupy Comics, uh, brand new, um, um, what do you call it, a compilation? Compilation. Uh, anthology. 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 Yeah. Um, and um, all the proceeds, all the profits from Occupy Comics are donated to Occupy-related uh, initiatives. Very cool, man. Uh, Aspen in their 10th year with their 10 for 10. Uh, 10 new titles coming out this year between February and November. Uh, this is their brand new one, Overtaken. Which uh, I believe will be a significant improvement on Bubblegum, which was the uh, the title that came out with last month. I would also I have another announcement. I have another doctorate. Oh, God. okay. Hold on. What was the first one in? I don't remember now. <laughs> but this was <laughs> God. You, you but this just was forget everything psychology. after the test. I mean, God. I got the doctorate now. I don't need. I don't need anything else. Anyway. <sighs> anyway. Um, hold on. Okay. It was in so justice. Uh, de- uh, it was a, de- a degree of doctor in sciences in justice and security, with all privileges thereto pertaining. What okay? All so that's, privileges. And the what, next one what? is the other is in parapsychology. Uh, Doctor of Science is in parapsychology. All right, Vinkman. So two psychologies, a pair of psychology. Why not? <laughs> he's in it. He's in it as a dodge <laughs> or a hustle. Don't hate. <laughs> All right, this is our education. My favorite system. book. Regular show Yay. number three. By the way, um, uh, a lot of these Kaboom titles uh, on the back have been um, um, advertising Hero Bear and the Kid. This is a fantastic. It is. title. Um, Definitely check that out. <gasps> is, it, is it? Is it? Is it? Whoa, 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 is, is that right? Is it Ben Riley's back? Yes. All yes. right. Scarlet Spider. He's back. And this is actually one of our top selling titles. Uh, Scarlet Spider. Uh, you Oops. know, it, 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 it has been building a following and it is really really worth it. Um, num- number three of the secret is out today as well. Fantastic. That's a Jonathan Hickman book. Uh, brand new from Dark Horse, Station to Station. I believe this is actually a one shot. Uh, Rob would enjoy that. I like one shot. Yeah, yeah, right on. Here you go, Fred. Rob always gets one shot. I mean, uh, gets uh, Fred, <laughs> needs, Fred needs a date. <laughs> he only gets one shot. Uh, what you got here? Because uh, I like the cover right here. Superman. Oops. Out today. Oh, wait and a second. Adventures of Superman. And Adventures of Superman with the, classic, with the classic cover art. That's yeah, right. No, are, we, are we considering Bruce Tim classic now? I consider the style classic. I c- yeah, the more the 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 the, the, the 1950s era. Yeah, the okay. golden age era. The modern kind of like uh, the brave and the it's bold. A little, it's a little stylized, right? Style exactly. Modern, yeah, exactly. A uh, hundred penny p- press. If uh, people aren't familiar with that, that's something that IDW puts out to uh, uh, reissue, re-release uh, number ones uh, for one hundred pennies, which is one dollar. And uh-huh. this is the first in the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, which is excellent. And by the way, also City Fall, which is the new uh, issue of Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, is out today. Oh, nice. Uh, Thanos Rising is out today as well. Fantastic. That will be leading into all sorts of goodness for the Marvel verse. Are we is this kid dead yet or what? Come on. Come on. <laughs> yeah, Spidey No More in Ultimate Comics Spider Man out today. Mm. Uh, you uh, of mu- course the the whole thing is Miles Morales is gonna be moving over to the uh, six one six universe right. yep. actually. When they kind of get rid of the ultimate universe. 
you must thwip okay, it. Okay, so 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 let's let's back Cataclys- up a second. Cataclysm why is the ultimate universe. why are we going to destroy the ultimate universe? Because that experiment is over. But it was a great experiment until they did ultimatum. I have to agree. I there will, was no turning back after ultimatum. I will agree with you. Well, the, they did too much. Look, I I think that I think the, I I can't speak for Marvel, but I think that the the experiment that they did with the Ultimate Comics universe in creating a universe that was much more grounded in reality, and this was all inspired, of course, by 9-11. Um, I think that it has actually now crossed over and has inspired and energized the, the regular Marvel universe. I will say, yeah. Uh, and has. I think that we've been seeing a lot of that in we the films have. as well. Uh, so I think it's done its job. It it re-energized the entire Marvel So universe. now it's time to get rid of it. Now will, it. now will we have two Nick Furies is the question. That's the most important question. I mean, we have to have two of everything. It's comic books. Yeah, we do. We do. Um, Uncanny Avengers is out today with mm-hmm. Wolvie on the front. And Exterminate. Wolverine and got himself crucified again. In Uncanny X Men. Um, new Unwritten. <clears throat> I love Unwritten. Unwritten is one of the best written comic books out there, um, and I think that probably will be it'll be my number one uh, top written title once the Lock and Key ends, which I'm sad about. Okay, Scott Snyder, The Wake. Mm. This is a must buy. Must, 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 and also Wolverine Max. Um, which Ooh. is out today. Um, also, I'm going to do something a little unusual. I couldn't actually stack all this stuff, but I want to point out a couple, If I don't know if they're on camera or not, a couple of the uh, new graphic novels that are out today. Uh, brand new uh, Neil Gaiman Sandman Omnibus, uh, number one hardcover. That is a that's gorgeous. That's off the shelf. That's a gorgeous, well, hopefully not because it'll break, but um, that's a gorgeous embossed hardcover library edition volume. Um, New Guardians of the Galaxy, uh, first compilation hardcover from the New Guardians of the Galaxy series from Marvel, which I think is excellent. Um, uh, Spider-Man uh, Amazing Fantasy Omnibus Volume 1 it's $100 it is so worth it though it's amazing um, also out today uh, brand new League of Extraordinary Gentlemen pr- printing um, and uh, OMAC uh, again Jack Kirby One Man Army Corps that's issues 1 through 8 of the classic Jack Kirby series uh, uh, Rick what is this I'm holding here uh, that is awesomeness Ooh. hold on from Play Arts that actually came out last week and as much as I love uh, the play arts, Kai. Uh-huh. Yeah, I've seen some of these. I, I, I got the other one. Okay, and uh, literally is flying off the shelves. This. Uh, let me oh. get there. This is pretty. I thought. I think the eyes look a little dark, but um. Interchangeable heads or anything? Oh, hey, man. get on your knees, son of Jarrell. I got the. I got the cooler one, man. <laughs> this. Is Beg your a- pardon. <laughs> <laughs> This is how we re- this is how we resolve conflict. Wow. Here. Yeah, I will say the I, I will say Michael Shannon looks even creepier. Yeah, yeah, I love the, I, style. I, I love the battle armor, man. Wow. Can you show that on camera there, Danger? I am. He, he's right there. He looks creepy. Trying to little head. Does he have a spare head or something there? Yeah, he's got a spare head. Oh, okay. I will say I, I I was I was mentioning to somebody. Um, we were mentioning to one person something coming up, and I'm just going to throw it out there. Uh, one of the best uh, action sequences of the summer has to be this guy and that guy's dad at the beginning of that film. Hmm. Has to be one of my favorite action sequences of the summer. Okay, that just looks... Um... Oh, boy, Ardman! <clears throat> oh, no. Yeah, I, I had to bring this down. Ardman! You guys are bringing down all your cool stuff. All right, let's see. All right. It. This is amazing. I love Ardman Studios. Are Ardman you? makes great stuff. And I, li- I like the Catwoman. That's that's a cool cow. <laughs> that is, that's isn't, a it? Fish. isn't it? Yep, yep. <laughs> and I love Joker holding the balloon. That's awesome. <laughs> All right, that does look pretty cool. And Robin. <sighs> Boy, Robin's it's taller amazing. than uh, He's the tall, skinny, goofy guy. It's like so amazing. Cool. That so amazing. is awesome. Well, and how and, and, and how much is this going for? I think it's sixty. Wow, that is that 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 70, seventy-four ninety-five. Seventy-four ninety-five. Right on. So. Yeah, it's that's fantastic. pretty cool, it's man. Fantastic. <laughs> oh, bless you. Excuse me. Who told you that? <laughs> anyway, uh, we, do, we are going to start closing out the show here. Uh, we do have some news for this weekend. Um, That's this right. Friday, uh, it's Labor Day weekend. Of course, we have Lone Star closing down and becoming collected. We're going to be here for that. I'll talk about that again in a second. For the uh, opening. But this weekend, we do have Anime Fest. Anime Fest? And we have interviews galore lined up. Chris, how's your Japanese? Eh. We have a problem. I know. I know a little Japanese. I I'm know. I know. I knew food names in Japanese. The good news is I'm actually fluent, so we're good. Anyway, good. But we do have a lot of interviews with people in anime. But apparently not affluent, or else you could buy that damn drone for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Don't hold the drone over my head. 
<laughs> literally. <laughs> oh, but a bunch. <laughs> He's here all week, ladies and gentlemen, literally. Uh, Saturday, we were doing the show from the floor of Anime Fest, and uh, for the first time ever, you actually, uh, and I was going to talk to you, I, I got us a little PA. You got us a PA? I got us a PA. Are we going to be... Um, so people will be able to hear us during the show more than just hearing us talk like here. So, wow. So, so we, it could be loud and obnoxious. Oh, I thought he meant prosecuting attorney. Well, both. Anyway. Even better. So, uh, <laughs> Linda in the chat room. Anyway. Um, what also, uh, we'll be doing the broadcast on Saturday afternoon uh, between uh, 4 and 6 is what we're looking at. Right on. And at uh, 10 p.m., we will be holding a viewing of the... Seminal classic, 1989 classic. Classic cinema masterpiece, Samurai Cop. Cop. <laughs> okay, the movie, I've got to go ahead and say this real quick. Go I ahead. Could, I could barely get through a half hour of this. Yeah, but that's why we're going to be making fun of it. Which, uh, yeah, we're going to be I've, riff, I, I we're gonna be say, live riffing this thing, and hopefully people will stay for the whole thing. But yeah, oh, it we is. Have, and thank you to uh, Cinema Epoch for uh, giving us permission to uh, view this Thank you, guys. We greatly appreciate it. Uh, we hope to see a lot of you guys down there at Anime Fest. Uh, we'll be out on the floor. We'll be doing the broadcast. Please come to our We'll panel. be doing a little dance. And uh, we hope to see you Make a love. here at... Get down tonight. At Collected. Uh, on Labor Day for uh, the grand yep. opening. Yep. Come by Come by books from these guys because they I have a feeling that people. there will be big things planned. Yep. Do, do I need to do my spiel now? Do I, your spiel! Do right. your spiel! I all have right. given you the camera, sir. Please go all ahead. Right. Fantastic. Well, um, thank you again for joining us for, once again, the final New Comics Wednesday from Lone Star Comics and Games in Plano. Um, End of an era. We, it is. Uh, we, um, we will be holding a customer appreciation day all day this Friday, uh, which is going to be August 30th, and we are open from 11 to 8 p.m. We will close our doors at 8 p.m. as Lone Star Comics and Games Plano. Uh, now that day on Friday, uh, Customer Appreciation Day, uh, we will have uh, drinks and uh, and snacks in the store, and we're also going to be doing some amazing giveaways of uh, statues and action figures. Uh, so come on in, get a raffle ticket. You do not need to make a purchase in order to get a raffle ticket, uh, but when you make more purchases, you get more raffle tickets, and you do not need to be present in order to win. Uh, and then, are you doing this one? Or do, okay, you can excellent. do that. Fantastic. All right. This is, this is kind of like an, an old MTV uh, uh in excess video um, and then we will be closed on Saturday and Sunday uh, August 31st and September 1st but Got we will reopen our you know, a lot of work uh, we will reopen our grand reopening as collected comics games and gifts your na friendly neighborhood pop culture headquarters Plano on Labor Day, uh, which will be Monday, September 2nd. We will be open from 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Uh, we are also going to be having uh, snacks, cake, uh, donuts, uh, coffee, beverages that day. Uh, but also we have some beef amazing, jerky. amazing, no beef jerky. No beef jerky. Uh, but we do have some amazing prizes to give out that day. Just like on Friday, uh, you come in, uh, whether you make a purchase or not, you get a raffle ticket. Uh, you do not need to be present in order to win. Uh, and when you make additional purchases, you earn additional raffle tickets. So some of the prize packages, all of which are valued at $100 or greater that we are giving away, are a full-size uh, Green Lantern prop replica. Oh, wow. With the battery. That's a $200 value. Give me. Um, also, be here. Um, also, uh, we are giving away uh, the $100 Absolute Frank Miller Ronin uh, hardcover slipcase edition. Oh, wow. Um, also, there, is, there are three uh, Star Trek items uh, that are going to one lucky winner. One of them is a four-foot-long model of the USS Enterprise with the cutaway so you can see into the engineering spaces and all that stuff. Uh, also, the Star Trek vault and a Star Trek graphic novel go with that. And uh, the fourth one that I can disclose is a uh, set of three Axis and Allies board games valued at a total of $260. That's the second edition Dude. of the 1942 basic game. That's also the 1914 World War I editions, first time they've done that, as well as Axis and Allies D-Day. So be wow. here. Wow. Yeah, and it's going to be amazing. we got other stuff as well. You can meet one of the new owners, Ron, uh, who will be here on Monday. And uh, so, again, that is Collected Comics, Games, and Gifts. As we say goodbye to Lone Star, uh, and it's been that nice will be you, Lone Star. It, it has. It has just a just a quick word about that. Um, you know, Lone Star Comics is not going away, uh, not by any means. Uh, Lone Star Comics uh, is uh, returning to its roots in Tarrant County, uh, maintaining its presence at the flagship Arlington store, one block south of the UTA campus, and also just down the road from Hewlin Mall at their Fort Worth location. And MyComicShop.com, which is part of Lone Star Comics, uh, has never been bigger, and they are going to be expanding the website quite a bit. Uh, MyComicShop.com is the world's largest internet retailer of uh, new comics, back-issue comics, compilations, graphic novels, and other collectibles. So Please, please patron them. And we just want to say to Buddy and Judy Saunders, who began this company 50 years ago, um, it has been a pleasure and an honor working for you and helping to fulfill your vision of Lone Star You Comics. are the epitome of class. You sir. are class, sir. Class. 
Well, they are class. They, they are, are class. class. I got to say, and I and and like I said, Buddy and Judy have, uh, as you were in, just to add on, they've done a lot for the local comic book community. Not just the local. Just um, ne- yeah. I mean, Buddy actually, there was um, there was a uh, a fanzine that he was one of the founding uh, subscri- subscribers to in 1961. Uh, which um, uh, was called uh, um, Rocket, uh, the the Rocket uh, Comic Collector, right? And uh, he he actually was one of the people who began the entire industry of collecting. Um, and uh, Buddy and Judy have uh, grown this empire. You know, in specialty retail, staying in business for five years is is a success. Staying in business for but fifty years, they is certainly amazing. brought um, a lot to as, as somebody lot, yeah. who's grown up uh, with Lone Star Comics. <laughs> Same but here. It's time. It's time. It is time to pass the baton to a new generation. A new generation. You're you're, you're passing it to Freddy? Really? Uh, Not that that generation. Not that generation. (laughs) That's the generation that plays Yu Gi Oh! (laughs) Wow. We are closing out this show. Yeah, we've got to wrap it up, kids. uh, Next time, well, this weekend, check us out. We'll be around. Uh, Next week, we'll be back in the X Cave uh, and uh, hopefully have more of our cast here. But yeah, all the slackers that skipped tonight. You know, you slackers, I tell you. Anyway, darn sight. Hi, Two presenters. I am Jason the X. This is. Go I, ahead, buddy. I am the Professor Christopher Danger. I want to say, guys, thank you for watching. Thank you for being cool. We appreciate it. Thank you to Rick, Rick Crowback, and Domo, and Domo of Collected. Keep Comics. on nerding. Keep on nerding, guys. Stay safe. Have a great weekend. Be safe, especially this is Labor Day weekend. So, um, if you can't be safe, be careful. If you can't be careful, don't get caught. And if you don't, if you get caught, blame somebody else. Yeah. Also, like in, Jason. Uh, yeah. Exactly. So, take it easy, guys. We'll see you next time. Adios, and uh, have a great week.